to be conducted by the Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change, joined with the Committee on Public Works, in aid of legislation and uh, inquiry on the Oriental Mindoro oil spill. The meeting is called to order and welcome to everyone. I would like to acknowledge the presence of physical presence of Senator Padilla and Senator Hontiveros. Thank you very much. And the uh, online presence of Senator Tolentino, Senator Revilla, and Senator Escudero. Okay. At this point, please allow me to recognize our committee secretary, Maria Clarinda Mendoza, to acknowledge our resource persons and other invited guests. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Honorable Senators. The Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change would like to acknowledge the following resource persons. Physically present in this public hearing are the following. We have Secretary Carlito Galvez from the um, Department of National Defense and also Chairperson of National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office. Uh, we have from the Office of the Civil Defense, we have Civil Defense, Isaac Bernardo Rafaelito Alejandro. Okay. From the Department of Environment, Natural Resources, and uh, Natural Resources, uh, Yusek Marilu Ernie, uh, Under Secretary Augusto de la Peña, Under Secretary Ignatius Loyola Rodriguez, and Director Romy Rose Padin. From the National Mapping Resource and Information Authority, we have Under Secretary Peter Antianco. From the Environmental Management Bureau, we have ASEC. Gilbert Gonzalez. From the Biodiversity Management Bureau, we have Assistant Secretary Marshall Amaro Jr. From the um, Maritime Industry Authority or Marina, we have Attorney Hernani Fabia. From the uh, Philippine Coast Guard, we have Deputy Commandant for Administration, Vice Admiral Ronnie Hill. Gavan and Vice Admiral Robert Patrimonio. From the um, Philippine Ports Authority, we have a Port Management Office of Batangas, Mr. Joselito Sinocruz, and Tony Mark John Palomar, uh, from, also from um, Port Management Office Bataan. Mr. Mr. Albert Francis Goles, um, no, okay. and from Philippine Ports Authority, we have Attorney Mark John Palomar. Yes. Um, okay. From the Department of Tourism, we have Regional Director for Region Six, uh, Crisanta Marden Rodriguez. From the Department of Labor and Employment, Assistant Regional Director for Region 6, Attorney Dax Villaruel. From the um, Philippine National Police, we have Police Colonel Romel Javier, and together with Police Colonel Oliver Tanseco and Police Lieutenant Colonel Melvin Laguros. From the local government units affected by the oil spill, we have from the Province of Oriental Mindoro, Governor Humerlito Dolor. From the Municipality of Nauhan, Oriental Mindoro, we have Mayor Henry Joel Tevez. From the Municipality of Pola, Oriental Mindoro, we have Mayor Jennifer Cruz. From the Municipality of Gloria, Oriental Mindoro, we have Mayor Herman Rodeherio. 
From the municipality of Bungabong, Oriental Mindoro, we have Mayor Elio Malaluan. Hindi ito lahat eh. Uh, virtually present in this public hearing are um, from the uh, Department of Health, we have Dr. Adora Reyes. From the Pag-asa, we have Mr. Juanito Galang. From the um, uh, Philippine Coast Guard, the officer in charge, we have Rolando Luzor Punzalan. Okay. From the United Filipino Seafarers, we have Engineer Nelson Ramirez. From the um, civil societies, we, ha um, we have Attorney Gloria Estenso Ramos from the Oceana Philippines. From the Green uh, Greenpeace Philippines, we have Mr. Jefferson Chua. And from the academy, we have Dr. Irene Rodriguez and Dr. Cesar Villanoy from the UP Marine Science Institute. Uh, from um, also present in this public hearing is the ship owner. We have Mr. Miss, sorry, Miss Pritziti, Vice President of RBC Yield Marine Services, the owner of the Empty Princess Empress. Uh, can we ask the UP Marine Science you know, to sit in here? In front. Nasaan yes, Madam Chair. Nasaan sila? Online ba? Online ba? UPMSI. Online sila. Online. Um, the UP Marine Science Institute representatives po are online po. Online. Virtually. Okay. Um, that is all, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you very much. Our agenda of today's public hearing refers to the recent Oriental Mindoro oil spill incident. Senator Francis Tolentino rendered on March 6, 2023, a privileged speech on the issue, while I filed proposed Senate Resolution No. 537, directing this committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the escalating oil spill from the sunken tanker mount Mount Princess Empress that is causing surmounting damages to the marine ecosystem and biodiversity among its other adverse if effects. Both Senator Tolentino's privileged speech and the said proposed resolution were referred to this committee. As a backgrounder, we have gathered from reports and other sources that on February 28, 2023, an oil tanker called Mount Princess Empress that was carrying a cargo load of around 800,000 liters of industrial oil encountered engine trouble due to overheating. The rough seas allegedly made the vessel drift towards the vicinity of Palingawan Point in Oriental Mindoro until it capsized and sank off the coast of Nauhan in the said province. It was reported that the stranded crew were timely rescued prior to the sinking of the ship. The oil from Mount Princess Empress started to spill and spread in the vicinity not long after it sank. And we gathered from bulletin number 3 dated March 4, 2023 of the University of the Philippines Marine Science Institute that based on the oil spill trajectories made, the oil spill could possibly affect an, an approximate of 20,000 hectares of coral reef, 9,900 hectares of mangroves, and 6,000 hectares of seagrass that could be found in 14 municipalities and one city of the province of Indo Mindoro Oriental, two municipalities in Occidental Mindoro, five municipalities in Palawan, and one in Antique. That was a projection made 10 days ago. We hope to see updated figures based on the actual scenario now as the spread of the oil spill has been escalating day by day and its effect have become more pronounced. The National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council situation report dated March 12 stated that a total of 13 marine protected areas and 61 tourist attractions in Oriental Mindoro were affected. An 
an estimate of 8 kilometers of coastline in the municipality of Kaluya in Antique province were affected as well. As to the affected population, for Mimaropa, there are 21,691 families, which translates to 107,232 individuals found in 117 barangays are affected. While for Region 6, there are 7,617 families or 26,259 individuals found in four barangays are affected by the oil. We have previously experienced disastrous oil spills in our internal waters, the most prominent of which was the Gimeras oil spill in 2006, which was mentioned by Senator Tolentino in his privileged speech and subsequently during interpolation discussed with Senator Pia Cayetano, who was then the chairperson of the Committee on Environment. The sinking of the empty solar oil a solar one oil tanker which carried 2.1 million liters of bunker fuel off the coast of Guimaras affected 1,500 hectares of mangrove, seagrass, and coral reef, ruined the livelihood of 20,000 fishermen, and entailed a long time rehabilitation. Compared to Guimaras, the current figures show that the Oriental Mindoro is emerging to have more extensive effects okay our past and current experience that tell us that this oriental mindoro oil spill will definitely adversely affect the marine ecosystem and biodiversity fisheries and food supplies the livelihood of the people especially our fisher folks and the health of the people who are at risk of contracting respiratory diseases due to the inhaling of the oil and, of course, the uh, pollution of the drinking water. Tourism industry in the affected areas, which consists of the coasts and beaches of Oriental Mindoro, are popular tourist destinations, are affected. It is an understatement to say that this is a distressing news for the country. For one, this oil spill incident is a setback on our ongoing efforts to strengthen our ecosystem and mend our fragile biodiversity while we are in undergoing the United Nations Decade of Ecosystem Restoration from 2021 to 2030. You see, the Philippines is among the world's biodiversity hotspots or those areas experiencing high rates of habitat and biodiversity loss. Based on reports, the oil spill threatens around 21 locally managed marine protected area, including the Verde Island Passage, which is the center of the global shore fish biodiversity. And this happened while there are pending bills poised to give Verde Island as a legislated protected area in the future. Moreover, as the people are still inching towards recovery from the pandemic, it appears unwarranted for the residents of the provinces and municipalities in Mimaropa and Region 6 affected to be subjected to additional hardship because of the oil spill. There is an urgent call for the public from the public for the ship owner and the national government agencies concerned to contain the oil spill in the most expeditious way possible. Time is of the essence in order to avert further and irreparable damages. Sure, it will not be easy, but we have the national oil spill contingency plan in place. There is technology in the application of containment containment booms, skirming of oil, siphoning of oil, use of sorbents, and it, it is safe, the use of chemical dispersants to break down the oil. The private sector has, significant, has significant, signi signified willingness to help. It was also reported that Japan and the U.S., who have experts in oil containment and recovery, signified willingness to help too. We hope to learn and see what will be the calibrated actions 
of all relevant government agencies towards the goal of oil containment. However, while it is the oil containment which seeks urgency, the following relevant questions has also been raised. How are the affected residents, especially those who have lost their livelihood, being assisted? How will they be compensated for the disruption and damages they are suffering? Senator Tolentino has raised the issue on seaworthiness. Did our regulatory agencies such as Marina and the Philippine Coast Guard exercise appropriate judgment in according seaworthiness to Mount Princess Empress? Did they take into consideration the probable circumstances such as the oil spill? And were the presence of maritime protected areas in the vessel navigational route taken into consideration? Senator Legarda has raised the issue of whether maritime mishaps are happening because our maritime enforcement agencies are lax in implementing our maritime laws. Are vessels with poor condition allowed to ply out sea routes? Senator Pia Cayetano pointed out that there exists an oil pollution management fund created under RA9483 or the Oil Pollution Compensation Act of 2007, which is the law she championed in the aftermath of the Guimaras oil spill. Is that fund intact and ready to be used during oil spill occurrences? Those are some of the relevant, relevant questions begging for answer. We will now hear from our other senators who may wish to give their opening statement as well. But, uh, opening statement ba, senators, or yung ano na? Uh, Madam Chair? So, Madam Chair? Uh, yes. Sir yeah. Uh, we will give the first uh chance to Senator Tolentino, who is in Camarines Sur, and he is afraid that the online his online presence might not be continued. So he wants to give his uh, uh, opening statement now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize to the members of the committee as well as the resource persons present that I'm not physically present because I, I have several uh, times postponed this trip to Camarines Sur and I'm here in Gainza Camarines Sur right now. But at the outset, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to thank you for uh, hearing the content of my privileged speech delivered last March 6 uh, this year together with your uh, proposed resolution. Madam Chair, talaga po nakakalungkot at uh, ang dami pong tatamaan ng fish sanctuary sa nauhan, tuhod fish sanctuary sa Pola, yung Bakawan fish sanctuary sa Peter Darak, sa Pinamalaya, among others, runs of fish uh, sanctuary sa Gloria, Okay. I want to inform the senator, Senator Tolentino, that they are all here, the mayors of those towns in ano, in uh, Negros Oriental. They are all here now in the session hall. And Neg uh, Mindoro Oriental. They are all now here in the session hall. Okay. Na po, uh, dear mayors, wala po ako dyan dahil matagal na pong kompromiso itong sa Camarinesor. Pero ako po eh, Katulong po ninyo at binabanggit ko nga po yung mga naapektohang fish sanctuary sa Bungabong, Anilaw Fish Sanctuary, uh, sa Pansalay, ganun din po yung Santa Brigada at hanggang sa Bulalakaw po uh, yung pong uh, Balatasan uh, Fish Sanctuary. At ang chair, ang, ang gusto ko pong maliwanagan dito, uh, salamat po at nandyan po yung, yung miari po ng RDC. Kahit po siguro wala ako mamaya, eh, siguro po pwede pong magulat at matanong sagutin nila. Ito pong ating, uh, ito pong empty Princess Empress na pag-aari ng RDC ay covered po ng isang 1, million, 1 billion dollars protection and indemnity insurance. So sana po sa bawat insidente ng oil spill, sana po masagot ito mamaya uh, kung talaga pang co covered sila ng insurance at paano po ito magagamit sa ngayon po sa Republic Act 9483 at Republic Act uh, 106. Five for uh, Madam Chair. Gusto rin po natin malaman kung nandyan po yung Marina, kung ganong katanda na po itong Princess Empress. Ganong katagal na po ito sa Bata, wala lang. At uh, kung ito po ay na-inspeksyon na, na, sa kanilang Z-Wortiness, kailan po yung uh, inspection at ano po yung status ng RDC insurance claim. Dito po siguro 
uh, tutuon yung mga tanong ko kung ako po ay nandyan. Pero gusto ko pong maidagdag, uh, Madam Chair, kahit po hindi pa ito nababanggit, yung ginagawa po ngayon, uh, ako po ang sumulat din sa Japanese government so, sa pamamagitan ng Japanese Embassy at nagpapasalamat po tayo sila po ay tumutulong ngayon at magbibigay pa ng equipment. Subalit ito pong nangyayari ngayon, yung plankton po na, na habitat po, in weeks and months ang paglilinis po. Yung mga beaches po, yung mga tabindagat ay 1 to 2 years. Sang ayon po ito sa International Tanker, Tanker Owners Pollution Federation. At yung rocky shores po ay 1 to 3 years. Yung sheltered rocky shores naman po ay 1 to 5 years. Yung salt marsh po ay 3 to 5 years. At yung mangroves po ay mahigit 10 taon ang paglilinis, Madam Chair. So, aabutin po talaga ng mahabang panahon po ito. Kaya kailangan po uh, matuntun po dito kung sino po yung gagastos kung pwede pong gamitin itong uh, mag, 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 galing sa Oil Pollution Compensation Act na nabanggit nyo kanina at ito po ay manggagaling po sa insurance ng uh, Princess Empress dahil po sa batas, uh, sa Section 1 po ng kanilang IRR sa Ninth Republic Act 9483, for every, for every delivery ng uh, oil bunker, meron pong uh, 10 centavos per liter for uh, oil, uh, every delivery Ang, ang dapat po ay Kano? maibigay sa Kano compensation pera? fund. Ito po funds po ito, uh, Madam Chair, uh, ay ina-administer ng Marina. So sana po masagot ng Marina ito kahit wala ako mamaya, paano po i-implement ito para ma 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 matugunan yung mga pangangailangan ng mga kababayan natin sa Pindoro, Oriental, doon sa Siam na Bayan at maging sa Taytay. Uh, palawan. Sa, sa Coast Guard po, ganun din po siguro, paano po sila mag uh, tutulong-tulong at yung paborito ko pong BIFAR, uh, siguro po dapat magbigay po ng update sa status <laughs> ng fisheries sa uh, affected areas. update ba ang BIFAR? Uy. Uh, opo, uh, Mad Madam Chair, ma marami po kong katanungan pero naniniwala oh, po. Patawag na, mo. Uh, naniniwala po ako, Madam Chair, yung Marina BIFAR ay makakasagot ng sa maraming katugunan, lalong-lalo na po sa mga tanong ng ating mga alkalde na dyan po sa, sa committee room ngayon. At naniniwala po ako, Madam Chair, na yung ating mga kasamahan ay madadagdagan pa itong katanungan kung ito. Muli po, nagpapasalamat po ako sa pagdinig doon sa aking uh, privilege speech. At sana po, eh, matugunan kaagad ng lahat, uh, maging ng pribadong sektor, ang mga pangangailangan po ng uh, Mindoro Oriental. Lalong-lalo na po yung pola. Na alam ko po eh halos ma, ma, ma itim, itim na po yung tubig sa kanilang uh, baybayin dagat. Maraming salamat po Madam Chair sa pagkakataong ito. Ako po eh nasa malayong okay. lugar. Kuna na tong si Pontiveros. Si Pontiveros. Si Pontiveros. Si Pontiveros. Salamat po Madam Chair. O oh, tapos Pontiveros. Oo nga pero naandito to eh. Sige po. Madam Chair. Uh, 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 I just want to acknowledge the presence of Senator Tulfo. Oh, in the hall, yeah. And I wish to recognize Senator Hontiveros for his for her comments. Salamat po, Madam Chair, at isang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Bilang panimula ay nagpapasalamat ako kay Chair Cynthia sa pagdinig na ito sa isang issue kung saan nakasalalay ang buhay ng isa sa pinakamahalaga at pinakamayamang bahagi ng ating kalikasan. Dito rin nakasalalay ang kabuhayan at kalusugan ng ating mga kababayan sa Mindoro, uh, kung taga saan din yung aking maternal lolo, sa Nauhan mismo po, sa Batangas, Palawan, Antike at iba pang karatig po. -ok. Narito po tayo ngayon upang alamin ang pinakaugat nang naging dahilan ng trahedya ng pagkalubog ng MT Princess Empress at ang pagtagas ng langis mula dito. Putting at risk one of the richest biodiversity sites in the world. Putting at risk the livelihood of many of our kababayan. Nandito rin po tayo upang hanapan ng solusyon ang trahedyang ito na mabigyang proteksyon ng ating karagatan, lalo na ang mga mangroves na breeding ground ng ating mga isda at ang Verde Island Passage, ang tinaguriang center of the center of marine shorefish biodiversity in the world. Kailangan nating sama-samang hanapan ng solusyon at bigyan ng suporta ang ating mga kababayan sa pangingisda. Ang ating mga kababayan sa pangingisda kumukuha ng ikabubuhay at kilalanin ang kanilang mga pagsisikap na maprotektahan ang kanilang kabuhayan. Kamakailan lamang ay pumunta kami 
ni dating Senador Kiko Pangilinan sa Mindoro uh, Oriental upang maghatid ng tulong para sa mga nabiktima ng malalang pagbaha sa lugar. Matapos sa mga pagbahang ito, well, slick naman ang kinakaharap nila ngayon. The threat that this brings to the Verde Island Passage will impact not only the people living in Mindoro and nearby provinces, provinces but as the area with the highest concentration of coral reefs, fishes, and mangroves, it will also negatively affect the country's food supply. Ang ganitong kalaking problema ay nangangailangan ng sama-samang pagkilos mula sa iba't ibang sektor ng lipunan. Nagpapasalamat din tayo sa mga bansang nagpaabot ng kanilang intensyong tumulong. They are reaching out because they recognize the ecological and social importance of our seas. Madam Chair, the urgency of this matter cannot be underscored enough and we welcome all the help we can get. We need all the help we can get. Marami pong salamat. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Senator Risa. Uh, we now call on uh, Senator Revilla to make his comments online. Yes, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning to our very able chairperson, Senator uh, Cynthia Villar. Uh, colleagues, guests, resource persons. Uh, magkahalong lungkot at uh, dismaya ang uh, nangingibabaw sa ating mga damdaming bunsod sa naganap na oil spill. Matinting panganib na nagbabanta sa kabuhayan at kalusugan ng ating mga kababayan ang kinaharap natin. Make no mistake, this is a great uh, environmental crisis. Ang uh, nakakapuyos ng ating damdamin ay ang uh, panghihinayang. Lalo't alam natin na maaari sanang uh, napigilan ang uh, tra trahedyang ito. <clears throat> the extent of the damage is so overwhelming. Nakakapangilabot at uh, na malaman ang lawak ang, ng nasira sa ating uh, likas na yaman na alam nating uh, pinaghuhugutan ng kabuhayan ng maraming mga Pilipino. Uh, in just a span of two days after the incident, the Philippine Coast Guard uh, reported, reported that the oil spill was already 6 kilometers long and 4 kilometers wide, covering an area of 24 square kilometers. Madam Chair, that is already 41 times size of Luneta Park. Kung unang dalawang araw ng insidente, ganyan na kalaki ang sakop ng pinsala, imagine how much worse the, the damage is almost uh, two weeks later without uh, clear and immediate plans to remedy. Comment pa siya? Report ang unang kaligasan ay patuloy na nagdurusa sa bawat segundo. Na ang mabagal na pagkilos uh, ay nangangahulugan lalong pagkawasak nito. Uh, dagdag pa dito ay ang dumadaming bilang ng mga apektadong kababayan natin na nagkakasakit. Alam natin ang panganib sa kalusugan ng oil spill. Pero higit pa riyan ang banta sa hanap buhay ng mga na mga mangingis ng uh, humuhugot ng pagkakakitaan sa katubigan. Ang uh, nakakapang uh, lumong balita nga ay hikaus na hikaus, hikaus na ang ating mga kababayan doon. At uh, silang tagahuli na makakain, silang mga walang makain. Ang turismo bagsak, hindi lang uh, kalikasan ng nawasak, pati buhay at kabuhayan ng mga tao sobrang lagapak. Uh, labis ng uh, nakakaalarma ang pangyayaring ito. But... Uh, but we are already here, a point of no return for our, for, our, for, for our once pristine and blue seas. The damage has been done. Be that as it may, we cannot remain unfazed by the threats to our environment for the oil spill. Kagyat na aksyon ang kailangan upang supilin ang pinsala sa lalong madaling panahon. Madam Chair, let me reiterate that we should tighten the regulation on ships and tankers that we will allow to voyage our seas. Kung sa inspection pa lamang, kulang na tayo. Pa, para bang uh, sinadya na rin natin na mangyari ito. 
Pasensya na po kayo kung uh, mapangahas ko itong sasabihin. Uh, those whose negligence caused the oil spill should be held equally, if not more, liable. Sila na dapat uh, tumatanod at nagbabantay sa ating mga katubigan ay may higit na pananagutan. And uh, as, the, as the actor mainly responsible for this unfortunate event, RTC, Real Marine uh, Services Inc., you must take full accountability and should be at the forefront of cleaning the mess you made. Hindi pwedeng uh, hahayaan na lang nila ito. Ang sasagot ay problemang dinulot nito. Huwag nyo nalang gawing excuse yung insurance ninyo. Hindi matatapatan ng bilyon-bilyon no, ang uh, damage sa ating karagatan. Dahil kailanman na hindi niyan maibabalik at hindi niyan kayang tumbasan ang likas na yaman na nasira. Tingnan, tingnan nyo sa mata sa mata ang mga mangingisda na, na, magka, na hindi magkanda ugaga sa pag-ahanap ng uh, madidilensya dahil sa kumakalam na sikmura ng kanilang mga pamilya. For everything that you do or fail to do, the consequences will be borne by, uh, by your conscience. At habang inuusig kayo ng inyong konsensya, asahan niyong aabutin din kayo ng ipin ng batas at hindi kayo makakatakas. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Revilla. We now hear from Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Uh, uh, magandang umaga po sa ating minamahal na ginang na tagapangulo. Ano po kung masyadong uh, sasabihin na uh, mahal na tagapangulo kung hindi? Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng dumalo. Alam po namin na abala kayo sa ganap na ito. At uh, isa pong malaking uh, hina sa amin ang makasama po kayo. Maraming salamat po mahal na ginang tagapangulo. Uh, th thank you, Senator Padilla. We now hear from Senator Tulfo. Good morning, Madam Chair, Se Senator Cynthia Villar, my esteemed colleagues, Senator Robin Padilla, Senator Riza Ontiveros, Senator Francis Tolentino, Senator Bong Revilla, and Senator J.V. Ejercito, and other guests, and good morning to all. Before anything else, I would like to commend my colleague, Senator Francis Tolentino, for calling our attention to this incident, which is a matter of public concern in this committee for taking it up with urgency. Let me go straight to the point, Madam Chair. I'm here to find out if our laws are sufficient to hold people responsible for the oil spill liable for what has happened. Can they be held civilly or criminally liable? The problem of oil spill means so much more to our country than any other country. Kasi nga po, tayo ay isang archipelago. Binubo tayo ng mga isla at pinalilibutan ng tubig. It has threatened the marine biodiversity of the Island Passage. It has affected the tourist destination in Oriental Mindoro, Antique, Palawan. And based on forecast, it might also reach Romblon and Boracay. Ang ating mga kababayan ay umaasa sa ating yaman dagat. Kaya hindi po birong epekt sa ating bayan ng mga ganitong oil spill. As mentioned by Senator Tolentino in his speech, Madami naman po tayong batas na nakalatag para proteksyonan ang ating karagatan at yamang dagat. But we have to reinforce this. Republic Act 9483 or the Oil Pollution Compensation Act 2007 is silent as to the other liabilities and responsibilities of the ship owner and the charterer. RA 9483 merely exempts the charter from claims for compensation, pollution damage. Parang mali po yata to. The charter should also have a liability. I'm also concerned on the capability for Coast Guard to prevent and contain these oil spills. The Philippine Coast Guard was given a budget of 1.3 billion pesos for its Marine Environmental Protection Program. Ano po magagamit ito? Para maproteksyonan ang ating yaman dagat sa mga oil spill. How fast can we clean up this oil spill to maximize the damage it will cause marine wealth? I hope to be able to get answers to these questions during this hearing, Madam Chair. I'll expand on them and raise other concerns later. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat, Senator Tulfo. And so we proceed with our 
presentation. Uh, the order of presentation would be number one, Philippine Coast Guard. Number two is Marina. Number three is DNR. Number four is National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council. And number five is BIFAR. So we will proceed with the presentation and then afterwards we are free to ask questions. Okay. I just want to acknowledge the presence of BIFAR Assistant Director Isidro Velayo and of course uh, Yusek uh, Jonas Leones of DNR. Leones of DNR. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Secretary, I didn't see you. So I want to acknowledge the presence of Secretary Maria Antonia Yulo Loisaga. Okay. So before we proceed with our presentation, Senator Escordero would want to say something before we do the presentation. He, she, he's online, so we recognize Senator Escudero. Thank you, Madam Chair. No need. Everything has been said by my colleagues. I'd like to thank our colleagues for that. And I would um, intently listen to what our invited resource persons will have to say and will uh, reserve my questions after their presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. So, thank you, uh, Senator Escudero. Uh, they have changed the order of presentation. We will ask first the uh, uh, Office of the Civil Defense to make the first presentation. We recognize Secretary Carlito Galvez, Jr. Honorable, Honorable uh, Senator Cynthia Villar, the Chairperson of the Senate Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change. Our distinguished uh, senators present, resource persons, ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, Secretary uh, Loisaga. We in the Defense Department uh, and also with the OCD uh, will be looking forward to providing the information to the Senate Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change on the oil spill in Memoropa and region, region 6, resulting from the wreckage of Mount Princess Empress off the coast of Oriental Mindoro, last 28 February 2023. We commit to, to, to cooperate in any way we can, uh, we can to help the August body in its investigation on the incident and pledge that we will answer questions from the committee to the best of our knowledge. We thank you for this opportunity, Your Honors. And uh, with the permission of the Honorable Chairperson, may we allow Asik Repelito Alejandro to present the general situation and updates and the action taken and being undertaken by the National Disaster Risk Management Council and its uh, lead agencies. Madam, thank you. Thank you, uh, General Galvez. We, uh, Secretary Galvez, we recognize ASEC Alejandro. Thank you, Madam Chair, and to the members of this uh, August body. Allow me to present the update on the effects of the oil spill in Memoropa and Region 6. My presentation will cover the following, the, the situation overview, effects, and lastly, the actions taken. Next slide, please. Next slide. To start, allow me to begin with the situation overview. We will now discuss the timeline of events of this incident. On February 28, 2023, at uh, 4.16 in the morning, a vessel identified as uh, MT Princess Empress was reported half-submerged. The vessel had 20 men on board and 800,000 liters of industrial fuel oil. Upon receipt of this report, the vessel was immediately risk rescued minutes later. All crew were all were reported to be in good physical condition after being rescued. On March 1, 2023, the vessel submerged an aerial and naval surveillance operations. 
while on 3 March 2023, the oil spill has been reported to have spread to Western Visayas, the shores of Semirara Island, Kaluya, Antique, and has also reported sightings of oil spill. Additionally, the oil spill has also been sighted in the islands of Kiniluban and Agutaya in the municipality of Agutaya, Palawan. Next slide. Shown here is the slide. In the slide is the map areas affected by the oil spill using the Feel Aware program. A 10 to 40 kilometer radius impact, yeah, impact projected from DNR was included in this map. Meanwhile, the areas with confirmed effects were marked as red. Next. The same are plotted as indicated in this slide. Further, the image also included the trajectory model from the UP Marine Science Institute. To expand further on the projection, the area was focused on the location of the tanker. Most of the oil is projected to end, to end up along the coast of Polo Bay. Another scenario being reviewed is the wreck, wrecking, is the wicking of the northeast monsoon will also flow northwards toward Verde Island Passage affecting the coastal areas of Calapan and Verde Island Passage. On the second part of the presentation, we will be showing you the latest updates on the effects of the oil spill in regions Mimaropa and Six. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide, please. Shown are the photos. Next slide. Next slide, Paul. Shown are the photos provided by our regional offices in Region 6 and Mimaropa. The PDRIM also, with our PCG personnel, conducted cleanup operations and naval inspections of the affected areas. For its effect, effect, a total of 68 areas were reported to have been affected in Regions Mimaropa. 122 persons were also reported to have been ill due to the incident. While some of these ill persons experienced vomiting, area, majority of the ill persons reported dizziness due to inhalation of chemicals present in the oil spill. About 23,005 persons or 108,162 persons in 118 barangays were also affected in Oriental Mindoro and Palawan. 13,588 fisher folks were also affected by this incident. To date, about 4,125 liters of oily water mixtures and 12,685 liters of waste have been collected from the cleanup operations. Due to the effects of the oil spill, nine cities or municipalities in Oriental Mindoro have declared a state of calamity in their respective AOR as shown in the slide. Shown in these photos, next slide please are the reported sighting of oil spill incident that reached Western Visayas. Next slide. For the effects in Region 6, three areas in Antique have been reported to be affected by the oil spill. It affected 8,387 families or 30,226 persons in Kaliya, Antique. 66 fisher folks have also been aff affected by this incident. A state of calamity was also declared in the said municipality. For the cleanup operations, about 3,100 liters of oily water was collected. Plan and make appropriate action to deal with the situation. As a result, a task force was created to support the efforts of the DNR and the Philippine Coast Guard. This task force is headed by our OCD Regional Director of Mimaropa. We would like to acknowledge the strong leadership of Governor Dolor of Oriental Mindoro in spearheading, and in, in spearheading the response effort in the province. Next slide. Shown in this slide are the particular items and cost of assistance provided by the OCD with the assistance of our logistics partners. 
These include water filtration systems or units, N95 masks, fuel, hard hats, goggles, gloves, succulent blankets, shelter, tarpaulins, bottled water, and hygiene kits. Meanwhile, on the slide, next slide, please. Meanwhile, on this slide, are the actions are be taken by the RCD Maroon Field Service Incorporated. Next. The above images were produced using the modeling NOAA genome software. The original forecast is that the oil would head due west of the location. However, comparis comparisons of these results to, this to those observed by the overflight on March 1 showed significant discrepancies, as it appeared the oil had traveled south. The, result the results closely match on the south observation of the southerly moving slick. Oil was predicted to strand in the eastern side of Pindoro, is of Pola, as shown on the map. Next slide. The map shows, uh, the, the next map displays the progression of the slick over time based on various inputs that were received. Projections were Projections will still be updated as the situation remains to be monitored. Other factors are to be considered, such as weather conditions and sea current, that may also affect the trajectory of the oil slick direction. These assessments are being disseminated to the Ardream Sea member agencies and our regional counterparts. Next. We have conducted several Aerial inspection over Oriental Mindoro. We visited also areas affected by this situation and get clear picture of the magnitude of the effects to identify the immediate needs of the local authorities. Next slide. As regards the actions taken, the NDRIMC has issued Memorandum Number 15, 2023, dated 6 March for the activation of the four response clusters, namely the logistics cluster, the food and non-food cluster, the health cluster, and the search, rescue, and retrieval clusters. And they are on standby to assist the effort. In addition, the Secretary of National Defense has directed the tapping of the AAP reservists in the area to assist in the oil spill response. Moreover, the NDRIMC has recommended to the Office of the President the access the acceptance of assistance from Japan, the United States, and South Korea. That ends my presentation, Mr. Chair. Thank you, OCD. Uh, we now hear from the uh, Philippine Coast Guard for their presentation. Thank you. Um, Mama, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Habang, habang pinoprovide po yung presentation po ng Philippine Coast Guard for this hearing, I wish first to very quickly brief, uh, uh, greet yung atin pong chairman, chairwoman of the Senate Committee on Environment, Senator Sincha Villar, ma'am, uh, Senator Risa Honteveros, ma'am, Senator Rafi Tulfo, sir, um, Ma'am Senator Loren Legarda, ma'am. Thank you, Pa. Senator Robin Hood Padilla, sir. Um, Senator Joseph uh, Victor Ejercito, sir. And I think online with us are Senator Bong Revilla, Jr., sir. Senator um, Francis Escudero. And Senator Francis Tolentino. Um, kasama din, nais ko din pong batiin yung amin pong partners dun so, sa pagharap po ng challenge na ito. Uh, Governor Dolores, sir, of um, Oriental Mindoro, sir. Mayor Jennifer Cruz of the Municipality of Pola. Um, si uh, Mayor Elegio Malaluan po, the Municipality of Bongabong. 
sir. And um, Mayor Henry Tevez, Municipality of Nauhan, Oriental Mindoro, sir. Because, um, uh, to Secretary um, Perlito Galvez, Jr., sir. Uh, Secretary of Natural Defense. Muli maganda, other distinguished guests who are here with us, uh, right next in um, government service, magandang, magandang umaga po mundi sa inyong lahat. May just inquire if the presentation has been an already. I think uh, they are working on it, uh, sir, months. Nice ko po din po na i-introduce uh, po yung aking mga kasamahan dito, sir, part of Coast Guard leadership with us today. Uh, katabi ko po dito si Coast Guard Vice Admiral Ronnie Hill El Gaban. Siya po yung Deputy Commandant for Administration ng Philippine Coast Guard. Kasama po natin ang Commander ng Marine Environmental Protection Command, si Coast Guard Vice Admiral Robert Patrimonio. Um, and kasama po natin ang Commander ng Maritime Safety Services Command, si Coast Guard Vice Admiral Joseph Koime. Sa uh, ipanapa abo po ng aming commandant, yung kanyang pamingin, he was at able to, he will not be able to make it today. Sapagkat po meron pong um, conference sa uh, Regional Cooperation for Armed Robbery and Piracy sa Singapore. At um, Kung kaya uh, kami po, uh, ang lakas ng Coast Guard po na naandito po ngayon. Salamat po sa inyong pag-unawa. Um, I think the presentation is ready. So, um, ma'am, sirs, makikiso yun na lang po. Uh, ito po ang... Ito po ang... Yung, yung previous slide po, please. Ito po yung uh, mga parte po ng aming uh, ipresenta po ngayon. Uh, very brief background, yung response po natin sa PCG, what we did right away. In other words, yung affected areas as of this day, yung aming pong nakulate from the reports on the ground. And then the Philippine Coast Guard efforts na aming pong ipapakita by the day kung paano po yung naganap by the day. Interagency initiatives, interagency and inter international initiatives po natin na nabanggit din po ng ating butihing uh, chairperson po. And further forward, I hope you will allow me to just um, to deliver it um, in my own words sapagkat po Ang forward naman natin po talaga ang bottom line nyo is continued and aggressive operations on these oils. Next, please. Ang nakikita po natin dito ay ang natuntun po na location. Katulad po nang inireport din po kanina. At nakasaad din po dito na yung barko ay nanggaling ng bataan papunta po ng ilo-ilo. At noong Hindi ko makita eh. Noong uh, Sunday, noong Sunday po ay lumayag siya. At noong Tuesday, naganap po yung trahedya ng kanyang paglubog. 28 February. Next slide please. Uh, Ma'am, I hope I'll be allowed to go nearer. I'm very sorry. I forgot my glasses. If I may continue po, thank you very much. Sige lang. Nauna po, nauna po sa chronology po natin, nauna po ma'am, ang rescue ng tao. At uh, sa kabutihang palad, may dumaan po na FS. So na-rescue sila, 20. At na-facilitate din po ng Coast Guard sa pagkatrabaho rin ng Coast Guard ang tungkol dito sa buhay ng mga crew. So moving on forward, noong... 12.55 po ng gabi, anong happen, yung ating helicopter po, eh, umalis. 
papunta sa incident area at manila na tuntun at nakita yung traces of oil spill. Uh, meanwhile po, mga, nung pagkakataon nito, yung mga floating assets po natin, the boats that we have, responded as well. But they reported very, very rough seas. Nung 6.30 po ng hapon, by procedure, nag-activate na po tayo ng National Strike Force at nag-mobilize na po tayo papunta ng Kalatan. Um, noong noong na-receive na-receive yung yung report ng stress, kaya po ang Oriental Mibero na station, substation ng Kalatan, ang SLU, yung guidance school natin ng Kalatan, ang Marine Environmental Protection Unit o Oriental Mibero, ang lahat yung nagtuno upang makita kagad yung assessment at mailatag kagad yung nakarampatan na na pag-respond po. Next, please. I thank you very much. So, ituloy po natin, nag-deploy ulit po, ay nag-deploy po tayo ng helicopter para mag-aerial surveillance. Ang barko po natin, 97 meters, yung galing po ng Japan, ay proceed po sa area. Ma makita at magkaroon tayo ng maraming sources ng assessment. Yung strike force po natin ng oil spill, ay eh, na-mobilize at na-proceed po sa Oriental Mindoro. Next slide, please. Noong day two, Yung ating Marine Environmental Protections na Marine Science Investigation Force ay sumakay ng ating Islander 251 para po pumunta doon sa um, Oriental Mindoro. Yung Crisis Management Committee po na uh, pinangungulahan, uh, pinangungulahan po ng inyong abang lingkod ay Clean 18 po kagad. Yung Titan, Malayan Towers, uh, nakarating po ito sa Port of Calapan. Ito pong tagboat na Titan, ito po, eh, kinomisyon po ito ng may-ari uh, bilang kanilang response action. At ito, nung araw po nga ito, ay, na, sa distansya po na ating pinakita kanina, na ila, il, mga ilan ng nautical miles away, eh, no, seeing, seeing the oil coming out, ito po kasi yung paggamit ng dispersant, in as much as there are environmental considerations, eh, um, eh, they decided to use it, so, and using type 1 and Merkem, that is less damaging to the environment, in as malayo po yung distansya niya. Ang distance po ng paggamit ng dispersant sa ipinagbabawal ay kung yung depth po ay less than 50, 50 meters, uh, 50 feet. So, hindi, hindi po advisable yon Dapat po sa open sea siya. E, ito po ay 300 meters. 300 meters po siya, 100 feet po yung uh, 300, uh, 300 uh, feet, uh, meters. Ang depth po na ayon sa shard kung saan po nandun yung barko. Next please. Nakikita po naman natin dito yung mga deployments nga po rin on day 2. Atin po mapapansin na personnel at saka po yung ating mga aircraft at saka seacraft na maaaring mag-responde mag mag tubuhin po sa area. Day 3, please. No day 3, natuloy po yung apply pa ng dispersant Tapos po yung National Strike Force team, eh, shoreline assessment po. So pag nais namin makita na talaga kung gano'n ka-extensive, o kaya makita kung paano natin mapabaghandaan ng pag-protect. Nakakita na rin po ng day 3 ng sightings po ng trap na oil. Next slide, please. Noong day 4, ito po yung report from Oriental Mindoro. Yung atin pong komandante, kasama po yung komandante ng BEPCOM at yung MSIF uh, ay nagtuno pati po yung sa um, IOF, ITOF, eh, nagtuno po doon to conduct an assessment and to check. Tapos po, eh, tuloy pa rin po yung ating pag-service present muli, ito po ay offshore. 
Sample same po ay kinuha. Kumuha na rin po ng samples. At uh, dito po nagsimula yung proseso na pagkuha ng sample at para makita po kung anong type ng oil na yung nakukuha yung, uh, kung magmamatch po siya dun sa oil ng tanker. Next please. Nakabagnat na rin tayo ng day 4 po. Ito po ay yung 03 March. Ang ulat na ito from Antique. Nung hapon po ng 23 March, uh, 03 March, nakakita na po ng oil slicks sa shoreline sa barangay Tinagbok, Kaluya, Antique. But not as much as that, uh, what was seen in Oriental Mindoro. Nagkaroon pa ng konferensya, nag-designate na rin po ng oil spill response team o naglagay na rin sa Coso District, Western Visayas, kung saan sinasakot po ang Antique. Next, please. Nung day five, sa report sa Oriental Mindoro, yung atin na may karagdagan po tayo na na nagtungo doon. Yung Titan at yung M7 or 8, tuloy-tuloy po na naandun sa vicinity. So with our National Strike Force Team, Marine Science Technicians, one personnel from the incident management team also went there. We indulgence for this August body, yung day by day accounting po of how many were collected will be provided to sir. And there are two times there are idea of the results of the actions taken. Next slide, please. Day five, report from Antique. May collected po na 8 drums of oil water weights among the highlights of this day from Antique. Next, please. Number 6, reports from Oriental Mindoro. Nag-attempt po tayo mag-proceed sa source ng oil spill. Ngunit, katulad ng aking nabanggit, height of 2-3 meters po yung yung dagat, kaya even the oil spill booming will not be effective. Next, please. Ito namang ulit, galing pong antike, ang pagkukundak po ng best, best briefing po dito ay upang naalaman po ng publiko kung ano yung totoong sitwasyon at kung ano yung mga areas. Dito po nang simula yung mga balita na there are some affected areas that caused some alarm. Dito rin po nagsimula yung paggagawa po ng indigenous materials katulad ng coconut husks tsaka hay. West one, please. Noong day 7, 06 March, ito po yung mga naganap. Nagpun din po ang maritime casualty board na po madaman po yung root cause of the sinking. Ito po ay uh, ito po ay sa Philippine Coast Guard po na maritime casualty casualty board under the Maritime Safety Services Command. At iba po ay very similar po sa nagaganap. Nagpapakita lang po natin na ito na ito na ito yung pag-respond po natin dito. Next, please. Ng day 8 po, dumapit po ang mga representante ng embahada ng Japan. Nag-call po sa atin. At nung nag-call sa atin, we accommodated them. Pag-usapan natin at we, we agreed on what items can they give to help us. Uh, the rest po yung tumay-tumay pa rin pong operations natin. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Ito po, ito naman po, apan nung natasundo, ang yung Japan po ay gumating at uh, sa kanilang inaalok na tulong, katulad ng eksperto, uh, atin po yung resin ng Philippine Coast Guard. Next slide, please. At mabanggit ko rin po, the following day, they need to get deployed. 
Ngunit bago po yun, nag-humiling po yung DNR na ma-present mo na sa German Coast Guard yung kanilang presentations para sa appreciation po ng Jap ng mga Japanese Disaster Relief Expert Team. Naganda po yun ng 8 o'clock ng Sanado, ng umaga, last Saturday. At two Saturdays, two Saturdays ago. At ito po yung continuation po ng ating um, operations. May night po dito ng day 9, si dalawang personnel po eh, na ako maday po sa BRT Hydrographer Ventura ng Namria. Ito po ay may kapabilidad para makita po yung uh, by sonar yung configuration po sa bottom of the sea. And then, so then, clean up continuously aggressive po. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. Ito po, um, hindi man po nabanggit, pero the following day, go ito yung the following day, nagpunta ang Japanese. Ang, ang US naman po, eh, sumanggil na rin po sa atin. Two consecutive days po yun. Next slide, please. Ito po ang... Um, uh, ito dito po naganap yung meeting with US Coast Guard at kasama po dito ang mga detalye po ng reports. Ilan po ang running total ng na-receive ng mixture, uh, water, oily water mixture, ito po ay 1,420 na ng mga itong araw na ito. At ito po yung kung ano yung nakulit na oil contaminated debris na rinito rin po sa ulat na ito. Next please. Ito po yung nagdadap na pagpupulong ng, ng crisis management committee ng Next, please. Nung day 12 po, dahil nakikita na natin kailangan ng paghandaan yung at yung legal actions, nagpadala na po ang Coast Guard ng legal team. Bukod po dito sa legal actions po that we are looking into, kasama na rin po dito yung guide sa mga responders, individuals, and entities, kung ano yung kailangan nila na requirements na itatago para sa pag-claim pag later on. May guidance po na, na ipinuvide ang Philippine Coast Guard legal team para doon. The rest are reports of actions taken. The continuous aggressive actions taken. Next, please. Day 13. The Japan Disease Re Relief Equipment po, dumating. Tapos po, insira kay po sa Buhay Pre Corridor ng Philippine Coast Guard. So ito po yun, uh, umalis sila day 13, I think was a, um, 12 March, I think was a Sunday or Saturday. Sunday. So it's a Sunday, so despite it being a weekend, we were operating. May karga, and then they arrived Monday morning. Kaya by now, nandun na po yung supplies of the Japan Disaster Relief Expert Team. And it was described further, we 60 boxes in cartons of items with a total weight of 5.1 tons na mga kagamitan. Next slide, please. Ang konsepto po naman kasi dito ay maibigay kagad ng mabilisan, maaksyonan, may provide. Then the rest can follow later as we continue assessing. Ang continuation po na ito, sir, eh, 34 members ng NSF uh, showline cleanup eh, nagpunta sa mga lugar na ipinapakita at nakakolekta ng 1.14 cubic meter okay, o 1,000 kilograms ng oil contaminated debris. Very similar to the earlier reports. Next slide, please. And before we... Um, yung 891 na po natin, eh, uh, nakarating, di ba? 
Sa mana? Sunday? Saturday pa, Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday, Monday? Uh, nakikita din po natin para po hindi na po masyadong makonsume ng time dahil uh, it, is, it is really reflective of the aggressive and continuous operations. Not only of the Philippine Coast Guard, but members involved. Constituents of the municipalities affected as well. Next slide, please. Ano pong updates po natin? As of, as of uh, 13, 13 is yesterday? March yesterday. Yesterday. As if yesterday po, uh, mamaya pa po kasi natin ang hapon makukuha ang ulat para sa araw na to. A total of 5,206 liters of oily water mixture collected and contaminated garbage of 115-295 kilos. The dispersants that uh, were applied with uh, based on guidelines that we have is 11,960. Sa ngayon po, ang total length ng coastline affected is 55.5 kilometers. Ngunit, kapansin-pansin, sa tatlong araw na magkakasunod, wala pong increase in coastline length for the time being. For this report, I've already missed. In Antal Mindoro, 45 kilometers. In Antique, 6 kilometers. And in Palawan, 4.5 kilometers. Next, please. This is just a rough representation of what I just said, sir. Next, next slide, please. Um, Madam Chair. Yes, can I make a, a short intervention? Please? Yeah, we, we, yeah. We wish to recognize the presence of uh, Senate Pro Tem uh, Lauren Legarda to make a. Uh, Just a very brief, comment. A okay. brief intervention. Um, I saw that there's 55.5 kilometers of coastline in three provinces, but we of course, understand that it's not just the coastline. While we are concerned about that, it should also be the effects uh, into, into how many kilometers into the waters because the biodiversity affected and the catch of our fisher folks would not just be in the coastline. So we would need to know kung 55.5 kilometers total Palawan, Antique, and Oriental Mindoro, ilang kilometro towards uh, the sea ang apektado at uh, sumatotal ng uh, estimate ng um, ng uh, cost to our fisher folks. So also the offshore habitats like the coral reefs, like the migratory routes of our fish. So it's not just a matter of 55.5 kilometers, but also offshore, how many kilometers? Uh, I will probably see it in your report if it's not yet there. But if it's not in your report, that's very important to us. Uh, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Lauren. Now you can continue. Yes, uh, we recognize Secretary Loisaga. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, um, Madam Senator. Uh, we you. will have a report, po. the DNR will have a report on the impacts on the habitats as well as the environments. Po. It's in our report. Okay, I take note of that and thank you for your intervention, Secretary Loisaga. What I mean is, it's not just the environmental or ecological or maritime report, but the effect on the livelihood and the catch prospectively of our people in these areas because the habitat of the fishes and other catch will be affected in the months, if not years to come. So it is important that we prospectively estimate the damage wrought by the oil spill. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. If I may just add to, to our Yeah, yeah. Uh, we will hear your report after the Coast Guard and Marina, and then it's uh, uh, the DNR. Madam Chair, okay. pwede makasigit, Madam Chair. Yes, yes. Senator Medyo inantok na ako ng konti, pero maganda yung napapakigyan natin sila, mga sinasabi nila, very important yun. However, may mga katanungan lang po ako, kasi nag-usapan dito yung mga affected na mga uh, livelihood ng mga uh, mangisda natin um, and I've heard na yung Dole in fairness nagbibigay ng ayuda sa pamagitan ng tupad but that will take uh, weeks bago mabayaran sila yung immediate na ayuda siguro ang kailangan ng mga mangisda, yung mga estudyante nila uh, meron bang 
pera ng inilaan para dyan. Emergency money. Wala akong narinig na meron. Pero ang kailangan kasi, Madam Chair, is cash assistance. Kasi yung tupad, Madam Chair, tapagawin pa nila yan eh. And then after... The one cleaning the coastline would be the people from the place and they will be paid by tupad as uh, employment. Opo, uh -oh. Madam Chair. Pero ibig sabihin, kasi po, hindi sila kapanghuli ng isda. Day to day po yan. The, the vision and they live day to day. So, wala silang huli ngayong araw na ito magtatabaho sila, pero ano pong kakainin nila sa araw na ito? Bukas sa isang bukas, wala po. So, dapat, meron pong cash assistance na binubos agad sa kanila. Yes. Meron ba? Meron uh, ba? Yes. So, Madam Chair, if I may answer uh, our colleague, Senator Tulfo, uh, probably it's not the Coast Guard, but uh, I share your concern about that. Dahil hindi lang to isang linggo, isang buwan, uh, maaring mas maaring mas mahaba. So, ang ahensyang sasagot niyan ay ang DSWD at ang DA before kung anong supplemental income o alternative income para sa ating mga mga DSWD. Uh, DS, uh, DNR would like to answer uh, Senator Tulfo. Thank Let you, Senator. From DNR. Thank you, Madam Chair. As of March 3 na po, uh, the coordination between DNR and DSWD was already ongoing. The funds have been downloaded and they're already part of a cash for work program. The funds has been downloaded, madam. Eh, kailan po lalabas yung funds? Kasi ilang araw na po naguguto may mga mangisda. Sir, si Gov po. Gov. Excuse me po. Dapat po immediate ang action natin. On the first day na nangyari po itong kalamidad na ito, itong problema ito, nagagad iniisip natin yung nawalang kabuhayan, yung nawalang income, sa ating mga mga isda, sa kanila mga mag-aaral, yun po agad ang tinutugunan natin. Okay lang po yung may tulad. Thank you. From the governor, uh, what have been downloaded to the uh, Mindoro Oriental? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. I'm, I was uh, expecting that we will be heard first before any report. Because of all of this, we are the receiving end. We are the receiving end. The problem is all about uh, oil spill, pero ang effect po sa amin. All the funds are coming from the national government, pero ang suntok sa amin. We just came from uh, COVID, local government. After COVID, for the past two and a half months, we have been suffering from Sheerline, from Amihan, Baha po ang aming probinsa for the past two months. Ngayon, oil spill. Um, with your respect po, Madam Chair, I'd like to thank the President of the Republic for a very quick action on this as far as the directive of giving the national government support to the local government. It's supposed to be Coast Guard, not the local government. But I took the helm of leading the rescue, the response, and coordinating to everyone from the very first day. This is my 14th day acting as the incident commander, which I'm not supposed to do. I am the local government unit, local chief executive. But because there must be someone to take over and take responsibility for all of this, as father of the province, I take the initiative. Good enough, Madam, Ma Madam Chair. The president has given the go signal to call any cabinet secretary. The following day after March 3, Secretary Gatchalwan was the first to confirm my request. Una pong dumating sa amin is 20,000 a family put box, which we have already completed distributing the first wave. And this is going to continue for the rest of one month. So, dumating na po sa amin na uh, food box is more than 40,000. As of this moment, as I speak, Madam Chair, we have 100,000 individual Mindoreños who are directly affected by the oil spill, covering 20,465 families. Aside from the food box that DSWD is distributing, although kulang po at kulang talaga, hindi po siya makukompleto. Kasunod po nito is the cash per work program. Initially, the family at the, at the initial report as of March 3 is only 10,000. DSWD committed 10,000 worth of cash per work program for 15 days and another 15 days. However, the effects were so huge, it doubled. Kaya po yung for one um, branch no, 15 days, another 15 days, go consume na lang po siya ng one time. 
Okay, Mr. Senator, Madam Chair, we decided that the local government will take charge of trafficking the funds from the national government. Otherwise, there will be local governments sa sobrang dami at meron local governments na wala. As of this moment po, as I speak, nito, the first batch of the cash for work program is being distributed, Senator, from DSWD. And in the coming days po, we have a final list. From those lists, manggagaling po, Mr. Senator, Madam Chair, yun pong si sweldohin ng cash per work program ng DSWD. After that po is the dole. Okay. No, David, excuse me. Uh, can I interrupt? Okay. Maganda na ko may mga food packs na dinistribute. Ano to one time? Or Dito, continuous? Continuous on a siya. daily basis? Amin, amin, po siyang, amin na po siyang trinafig. DSWD is for one month. Weekly po meron set. Weekly. Weekly po. Tapos, kung na po yung food packs, uh, ano po yung nilalas na food packs? Lahat na, okay. kompleto po siyang set. So, po sabi, it's for four to five days consumption of a, of a family. Okay. And then after that po, it's the turn of the provincial government on the fifth So, saan galing po yung GOB? DSWD po yun. Okay. Nasa kami na po siya. Okay. Meron po. Meron po. Mat Bawat president. Bawat po affected sa official list namin. Meron po bang assistance? Oh, Meron po. Sa tupad? Meron po. Ito po yung cash per work program under DSWD. Originally, it was good for 10,000 families. It will now, now become 20,000. Sorry. Naintindi ko po yung cash per work program. Yung po itatabahin nila bago sila magkas... Ah, mag Nani ko po. Katapos po ng... Excuse me. Uh, agreement po namin. Po. Sige po. Katapos na magtabaho, saka sila bibigyan ng cash. Mabig ba na lang kung cash advance and then tabaho? Ganun ho ba yung nangyari? Every five days po ang agreement namin. Magbibigay po po nagpapasweldo po sa first batch. Okay, so every five days. Every five days po ang pagbibigay. So merong food box plus cash for work program. Cash for work program. Yes po. Okay, so yun po yung support ng DSWD pati ng Kudoli po ang susunod. Ilan po ang affected ng mga residente sa buong Mindoro? Uh, 20,465 families. Uh -huh. That's equivalent to 102,000 pa individuals. 102,000 individuals. So, ilan po ba yung mga food box to provide 1,200 102,000 individuals? Okay. Or families. Or families. Or families. Or families po. So, so, the government is trying to uh, uh, give assistance, pero it's not good enough. Kulang nga po. Yun po yung ibig sabihin. So, sino dapat ang magpupuno sa kakulangan na yun? Siguro po. Yun po nagkos ang aksidente. Eh. Maliwanag naman po dapat. Very, very, very clear naman po, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Senator, ang local government, nagbigay kami ng listahan. We officially gave the list to Coast Guard last week. I turned it over to uh, Commodore Rosario with the Admiral Abu as the witness. That is the official list, Madam Senator. Ito po kung bibigyan ng tulong, ito po yung official kaya, list. Kaya ang tanong ko sana, Madam Chair, sunod na doon sa may-ari ng barko. Meron bang binibigay na assistance yung may-ari ng barko? Financial assistance o cash assistance? Nandito ba yung may-ari ng barko? Ayan, ang hito, CP in half the company. Okay. Ano pong assistance ang binibigay niyo po sa mga apektado ng residente? Same po, Your Honor, lahat, Madam Chair. Lahat po ng assistance when it comes to our response request to the Philippine Coast Guard. Um, Madam Chair, ano po ang tanggal niyo nga niya? Face mask para mas madali ka maintindihan. Okay. Uh, ulitin ko lang po, sir. Madam Chair, so yun po lahat po ng our response um sources ay request for the Philippine Coast Guard. Madagdag ko lang po tungkol dun sa um, cash for work. Ang ano po kayo yung Harbor Star na in charge sa shoreline cleanup ay magkakaroon din po ng gano'ng klaseng programa para po sa, sa ating mga kababay na apat po ng oil spill. In, in terms of dun sa food tax na sinasabi po ni Governor, wala ba kayong pang-counter doon, tulong din, pagkain? Masahe ng mga estudyante papuntang eskwelahan? As, wala? Oh. As we said, Bakit ba't wala po? Um, we, are only, uh, we are a small family corporation. We are focused on oil spill response. Pero ngayon po, as we speak, we are preparing our own initiative to help our kababayans by no, our children. Sorry, I know you're a small family corporation, pero dapat pinaghahandaan niyo, meron dapat kayong pera na kahanda in case dumating ang isang hindi inaasaan tulad nito. Di ba? Meron dapat kayong pondo, pambuhos, para pang ayuda. In this case, may emergency funds, pambigay ng cash assistance sa mga apektado ng residente. Tulad sabi kanina, masahe pa sa mga estudyante, bawo ng mga estudyante, cash yun ang kailangan. Di ba? Eh, wala po kayo. Ang balita ko ano una, kayo po yung nagtatagwa ata. Ewan ko, correct me if I'm wrong. 
So dapat ma'am, makipagtulungan kayo sa mga taga-LGU. Kayo ba, uh, Gov, nakipagtulungan ba sa inyo itong uh, uh, company ng Inbalcom? We, we met once po, and uh, we are, what we are asking is this, two, 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 two things. The first one is on response, clean up. There, they are helping us together with Harbor Star and Malayan Towage. But as far as to direct assistance to our kababayans, yun po ang wala. Okay. And that's what we are asking sana. Kasabay ng gobyerno, kasi hindi po kaya ng gobyerno sustain. Masyado po mabigat ito, Mr. Senator. Napakabigat po. Ang nire-request na lang po sana namin, baka po pwede kasi sabi ng representative kahapon, they are procuring. Ang request po sana namin, yung when are they distributing. Yun. Ma'am, pwede niyo sagutin yun? Ma'am Fritzi? Your Honor, um, we sent my sister-in-law to meet with um, Mayor Cruz. I think it was last week, and we specifically asked what they needed. Um, and during that time, we were collecting the data on what the people, uh, ano po yung pinakakailangan nila nila. Okay, so nung nakausap niya po si Mayor last week at tinanong mo kung anong kailangan at sinabi sa inyo for sure kung anong kailangan, ano ba yung na-deliver niyo na? Um, um, Senator, I think during that time, um, ang sabi po sa akin is hindi po nila kailang or ayaw po nila tumanggap ng tulong nila sa amin. Sure ka? Sinabi ni Mayor? Na... Yes. Yung po ang nakarating sa akin from my sister in law. Um, yun po. Hey, Mayor? Tumanggi kayo ba, Mayor? Oh, Senator. Um, sabi ko po sa kanila, ilatag mo yung kailangan na ilalatag niyo for us. Yung tulong na binibigay is um, mga bigas, mga ganyan. Pero hindi niyo sinasabi sa amin yung clear na plano niyo for Paula dun sa mga damages and all that. Kailangan namin mag-usap with that o dun sa government. Kailangan na din kayo. Yun yung request ko sa inyo. Dati niyo yung lahat ng ibibigyan ng matulong para sa probinsya ang lalo na sa bayan ng tema. Hindi na po kasi bumalik sa akin. So after that, ang tabang ko nagbibigyan sa kanila for my days speedo nga lang doon na hindi ko sa kanila. May doon silang nag-reply sa amin. Napatayin ka rin ito. Ito na yung response. And now, after my days, magsasalita na kami ang national team yung nagbibigyan sa amin sa second day nila para sabihin na magbibigyan ng pag-iba yung sabi sa akin. Sabi ko hindi ko tatanggi pa nga yun kasi why now? Kasi sobrang tagal na nyo naging tayo sa inyo. Tagal na nyo naging tayo. Marami nang nagkasakit. Marami nang naapektuhan. Hindi nang walang tulong. So may naging tayo kami. So sinabi ko sa sabi niyo, sinabi ko sa gudal na doon. Bang nag-uusap kami, inatag niyo anong kailangan itulong sa amin. At kami rin, maglalatag kami ng gusto namin. So ngayon, kasi kung dahil sana, accepted sana eh. So ngayon, sobrang tagal. Ipagin bins na to. Ibang kaya lang kami maghihing time. And then, ang laki ng OSP, ang langis na paglumod ko sa bayan naman. Wala kami naman kay Babon. So, yung time table, wala din kong binibigil sa amin. Ang tulong. So, alam mo, ano, maghihintay pa rin po ba kami? Yung lahat ng mga mamaya na bayan ng prawa. We have 8,800 plus na affected families. Hindi po sila pamasay. Ang tumult yung iba. Pero, wala kami ang plano for us. Hindi yung take it lang po sa ni. Okay. Hindi po namin naman. Hindi po namin yung tamang plano for us. Hindi po namin naman. Hindi po namin naman sa amin. Okay. Ma'am Plitsi. Madam Chair. I understand. Excuse me pa. Madam Chair. I understand na mayroong $1 billion insurance kayo? Accident insurance? Liability insurance? Liability insurance. Ito ba yung na-file nyo na sa insurer? We are in close the uh, coordination with our insurer. So, we will have claims? Um, we will have problem on that. Maybe the Marina and the Coast Guard will uh, explain that they cannot claim from the insurance because they have no permit to operate. Oh! Nako po. Yun ang malaking problema. Kaya we should not wait for that anymore. They will have problem with that. They don't have permit to operate, Madam Chair? We asked the Marina and the Coast Guard. They don't have permit to so, operate. Coast Guard, bakit nyo pinayagan na maglayag itong barko na may mga oil? 
not depend on something that we will not that will not come. I didn't know, Madam Chair, wala silang permit para to operate. Yeah, so, because uh, 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 ask Marina and Coast Guard to explain that. I, I want them to explain. Di ba, lahat ng bago, bago yung maglayag, may sumasampa na miyembro ng Coast Guard para inspeksyonin yung mga patines, ng tao uh, nandun at kung anong karga. We didn't do that, right? So, uh, if you did that, eh, malalaman niyo na wala silang permit to operate pala. Eh, wala sa nangyayang Coast Guard yun. I think the company has permit to operate, but every time you have a new vessel, you get another permit for that vessel. I think this vessel was not given a permit. Madam Chair, I said, di ba, lahat ng barko na naglalag, dapat sumasampal yung Coast Guard to inspect. So, especially po yung barko nyo na bagong barko, at nakita nyo pala walang permit to operate, hindi sana pinalarga. Inistop nyo, wala sana ang oil spill ngayon. As Marina and the Coast Guard to clarify the situation, explain to us. Because I don't want the people to rely on that one billion insurance. If we cannot get that, then we should plan accordingly that we will not get that and we will take care of our. I, I, I agree, Madam Chair. Madam I Chair. Agree. May iging manifestation bago yung Marina at Coast Guard doon sa isang importanteng sinabi ni Mayor Cruz. Tama po yung sinasabi ni Mayor Cruz. It has the force of law yung sinabi nila dahil doon sa RA 9483, uh, yung Oil Pollution Compensation Act, liability for pollution damage lies with the ship owner. Kaya maitatanong sana no sa RDC in terms of compensation for the environmental destruction, loss of livelihood, and damaged properties of the people, kung ano yung mga plano. And I think ganon din yung sense ng sinasabi ni Mayor Cruz. Senator yes, Risa, before we go to the Coast Guard and Marina. company is a very small company and I don't mm. think they can tackle this problem. But they will go bankrupt. I understand, Madam Chair. So, Kaya naman tayo nagsisak ng liabilities. They will not do anything. Mm. So the government should be prepared to do something because we yes. can rely on something that we cannot rely on. Yes, Madam Chair. I share, <laughs> I share the Chair's objectives sa hearing natin to establish liability, whether it's the company or uh, others. Gusto ko lang bigyang diin yung sinabi ni Mayor Cruz na meron talagang solid na batayan sa batas. Madam Yun lang Chair, po. Salamat okay. po. Mabalik ko ito ko doon sa Cruz. Gandhi at uh, nasagot yung katanungan ko, Madam Chair. Uh, kasi, yes. Yes. Gusto ko lang malaman to ng lahat, ano? correct me if I'm wrong, Philippine Coast Guard, at any given time, any moment, na isang barko, the pier, maglalayag, kung anumang klaseng barko yun, di ba dapat sumasampay yung mga member ng Philippine Coast Guard, hinahapan ng papeles, tinitingnan yung crew, tinitingnan yung laman, uh, kung overloaded ba o hindi, etc., etc. So kung ginawa nyo yun, tulad na sinabi ni Madam Chen, na wala pa ng permit to operate yung bagong barko yun, napigilan sana maglayag yun. Wala sana nangyari ngayon na hospital. Um, thank you very much, sir. So along that line, uh, natapos na po, in fact, yung marine casualty investigation. Yung, ang commander po, may he be allowed... Sir, to okay, sagot na po, back to the point. Meron bang permit to operate? Yung sinabi ni Madam Cynthia Villar, may permit to operate yung barko? Wala. Yes, ano lang po. Uh, Mr. Uh, Honorable uh, Member, Sir, Senator uh, Tolfo, I'm uh, Vice, Admi Vice Admiral Joseph Colme. Uh, it is one of my functions to investigate marine casualty in the country. Sir, uh, sir, pakisagot lang. Yes, or no, may permit to operate, wala. I'd like to ask first, uh, just to be sure, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Honorable Senator, Sir, the, my field operator investigation. Napakasa pa sa inyo ako. You should come prepared. Napakasimple na lahat. Tanong, it's a simple question. It's a simple uh, answers direct to the point. May permit ba o wala? Dapat you should have investigated that. Kasama sa investigation, malalaman nila walang... Kasi sabi niya mag may chair, may center sin kibigay, wala raw permit to operate yung barko. Talo nga, ba't ito sumampa doon sa barko bago maglayag yun, sir? If I may, sir, you are correct, sir, that all vessels, the gross stands and above, uh, they are required mandatorily to secure departure clearance from the coast, nearest Coast Guard unit, sir. Okay. Secure so, clearance. And then the, our inspectors sir, are required to fill up those checklists. We call it pre-departure inspection checklist, sir. Okay. Di ba yung marina kasama din sa mag-inspect yan? Sa sampa? Not necessarily, sir. Not necessarily. Pero kayo sa Coast Guard dapat ang sasampa, di ba? Yes, po, sir. So, bakit di kayo sumampa? It's the marina who will give the permit and the Coast Guard is a counter check. If there is a permit, they will allow the... the Kaya nga po, the, it's, the, it's a combination. It's a counter check to marina. Marina will give the permit and you will check the permit, di ba? Ang sinasabi ko po, Madam Chair. Tanungin nyo sa marina. 
Alam ko, alam ko, Madam Chela, I'll get into that. Don't worry, I'll get into that. Don't worry, easy lang. Uh, Coach Gal, sagutin mo muna yung tanong ko. Sa, uh, sa tanggapan ko po, sir, bilang uh, nag-head sa investigation for this, we already recommended to our national headquarters for appropriate administrative legal actions and investigation. Kasi from now on, let's make it a point na bawat barko, walang barkong alis, di ba meron kayo mga personal sa mga PM? Diba? So, dapat yung mga personal sa pier, bago mag-red yung barko, inaakyat, sumasampa, tinitin ng mga pakulis, kung ano na pa mga requirement, to make sure na pwede ito, ito na ito na mag-layag. Diba? Kasi if, they, if you did that, wala sana oil spill. Diba? Ngayon, nagtuturoan kayo. Ginawa mo na po sana ang trabaho ninyo, hindi sana tayo nag-usap-usap mo yun. Simple as that. Period. Diba? So, may pagpukulang po kayo doon. So, from now on, bawat pier sa buong Pilipinas, mayroon dapat personal ng Coast Guard. Walang barkong lalalag na walang go signal mula sa Philippine Coast Guard. Di po ba? At dapat kayo, Philippine Coast Guard, ang marina, palagi nag-uusap. Kaya yung boy, nag-aaral ng marina at hindi kayo nag-uusap. Um, di naman po, sir. In fact, uh, we are closely collaborating to address such concerns. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, ano po yung gagawin mo ngayon na nakita nyo po may pagkukulan na kayo? Ano mga steps ang uh, ginagawa nyo ngayon, ilatag nyo so that this will not happen again? Kung bang hindi nyo pagsampa doon sa mga barko na naglalayag? Uh, thank you. Remember, may mga, bar may mga insidente na tayo, mga lumibog na barko dahil overloaded. Wala nang sumampanta ka Philippine Coast Guard. Di ba? Ito-ulit naman to. Ito may all spill. Barko na nalunod, overloaded, maraming namatay. Wala kasi yung Coast Guard na sumampa. Meron na sumampa, pero siguro, eh, pwede nyo mata habang nakasampa. Diba? Kasi kung talagang nakadilat ang mata, binibilang yung pasahero, may tingnan yung cargo, hindi tumutugma sa allowed na cargo para sa vessel na yun, o kaya nalubog, diba? Eh kung ginagawa ng Coast Guard trabaho, hindi saan nangyari yun. So, Philippine Coast Guard, mga sir, ano po yung ginagawa niyo measures ngayon na para hindi na po maulit ito? Uh, thank you very much, sir. Una po muna, nung lumabas sa yung resulta ng MCI, uh, parang nagpaalala muli yung ating kapamunuan po ng Coast Guard sa kanila mga unit. Sapagkat meron na po mga guidelines ito. It's a matter of ensuring na gagawin po nila katulad po ng inyong binanggit. Pangalawa, yung mga tao po na involved na aming na-identify sa investigasyon, eh kasi lukuyan po ay eh, nasa kustodiya sa loob po ng kanilang uh, unit pang nandun sila habang habang uh, alamin pa natin at uh, magdidig pa tayo ng information. Sir, hindi lang dapat yes, yung, ano, yung mga bababang ranggo, dapat yung matatas ng ranggo doon kasi sa, sa ngalan po ng command responsibility. Eh, bakit hindi kasi na-supervise ng mga matatas ng ranggo? Wala bang mga ano dyan? Mga colonel, mga general sa inyo or commander? Kasama po yun, sir. In fact, it is uh, okay. part and parcel of our concept okay. of you. investigation. Isa lang po, 1.3 billion meron kayong budget para sa ganitong klaseng mga insidente. So, ito po mga 1.3 billion, nagagamit na? Commander na? Uh, Bongki, uh, kasama po natin yung commander ng MEPCOM, mas alam po niya ito. Sa Marine Environmental Protection Command, Admiral Patrimonio, sir. Thank you, Honorable uh, Chairman and Honorable uh, Senator uh, Turfo, sir. So, uh, based on our General Appropriations Act for calendar year 2023, uh, the Coast Guard was appropriated, uh, as, as you have said, 1.4 uh, 1. 1.4 million. Okay. But, uh, the component of uh, this is uh, for, for uh, personal services is 1.3 609 million 500,000 pesos and only for MOE is 38 million pesos sir. So, uh, and uh, this further broke, 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 uh, broke, broke down into uh, four slides. Okay. So, sir, so, 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 they, you asked for this report, accident report on the foundering and sinking of Princess Empress. The ship has no authority to operate in the form of an amendment to its certificate of public convenience issued to RDC 
Relid Marine Services Inc. to operate the MTKR Princess Empress in the domestic trade pursuant to the revised implementing rules and regulation of Republic Act number 9295. Okay, that's ano. Please explain this to them so they will understand. Wag na natin pahabain ng usapan. Explain yun na lang to kasi to. Nung binasa ko itong report nyo, nakita ko to Ano ba to Okay. So, okay nga, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yung 1.3 billion, sabi mo naging 1.4, tapos ngayon naging 30 million na lang. Nalilito ako. Ang tanong ko lang, simple lang, yung pera ngayon na nakalaan para sa ganitong klase incident, pag nangyari, yung pa ba gumagulong na nagagamit na? Uh, Paul, ang, ang majority sa klase is for pang uh, sahod ng mga, ng mga personal natin. So 1.3 is for the for the compensation of our, all our personnel, sir. Sir, is for our... Ibig sabihin, itong 1.3 billion ay para lamang sa matauhan ninyo. Yes, sir. Compensation ng personnel natin. Compensation ng matauhan ninyo. Yes, sir. How compensation nyo sa mga apektahan? Pero kayo nilang pinag-isipan niyo, puro sarili nyo, kami, ako. Dapat sila. Diba? So, ibig sabihin, itong 1.3 billion na budget sa Marine Environmental Protection Program para sa matauhan ni pala ito. Uh, sa sahod ng mga tao natin, sir. Uh, Kaya nga, yes, dapat meron kayo inilaan para sa mga affected na mga residente. Di ba, sana man lang, kahit siguro food box, ano, bigay kayo. Eh, kung ganun pala, walang kapuslanan to kasi para sa inyong mga tauhan lang pala ito. Na dati lang may sweldo, sa sweldo mo pa ulit. Uh, hindi sure, pa, di ba? No, sa uh, uh, kabuhan to part 2 ng mga OPS ng kwansa ng Coast Guard, sir. So, it didn't break down, sorry, 1.3 billion. So, ang, 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 uh, ang working budget ang talaga ng Coast Guard, sir, uh, MA, sir, is 38 million, sir. 38 million, yes, sir. Pakali, siguro, Madam Chair, tulungan na siguro natin Coast Guard, nakakaawa naman, kung ganun, para magkaroon sila mas, mas karagdagang budget. Uh, last na lamang, Ms. Pitsi, uh, yung sinasabi kanina ni May Mayora, na uh, hinihiyan ka ng uh, program, uh, maglatag ka ng programa kung anong klaseng tulong ang uh, pwede nyo ibigay weeks ago pa rin hindi na kayo bumalik at pinabagsak ng telepono eh, sila bakit naman po ganon? Uh, Your Honor um, dun sa pagpunta po ng Sister Inlo ko dun kay Bayora uh, precisely to ask what the people needed um, so ngayon po nandiyan si Mayora nandito na po ako siguro after this pwede po kami mag-usap malatag na po kung anong kailangan nila at ano po ang kaya namin po maibigay, Mayora. Thank you po. Thank you sa inyo, Mayora. Kailangan po kasi namin na mag-usap yung governor and governors po kasi kailangan kompleto din po. Ilalatag namin din sa inyo. Hindi ko po dala uh, para kausapin po sila. Pwede niyo naman po kami mag-usap yung siyan. Uh, siguro kung para po lahat kami. Madam, Madam Governor, we recognize the governor. At the onset of the calamity, we call that very calamitous in our fight. We have decided that we will wait as one local government. The governor has already the authority of the Sangonian Pandalawigan to do, initiate, mobilize, and file any action relative to the oil spill. The legal municipalities has already issued a resolution authorizing the representatives from the LNP to sit. We have already identified also, Madam Chair, the other members of the TWG. I sent already the executive order comprising the TWG for this. Simply lang naman, Madam Pritz, sabi ko sa inyo dati, compensation is one thing. Compensation to damages is one thing. But as human beings, we must be compassionate enough to give whatever is not asked. Because when we give something that we ask, what we are asked to give, there's nothing. We are only giving what we are asked to give. We cause the problem. It is incumbent upon us as human beings to extend whatever assistance we can on our own bullison without anybody prodding us to give it. Ma'am, ang pagkain is basic. We don't have to ask you to give food. We don't have to ask you. Human compensation is another matter. Nalulungkot ako sa narinig ko kanina kay Senator Villar na there is a possibility not being not given the compensation eventually. 
that that hurts me most. Why? Sabi ko sa kahapon na nagwala ako sa, sa abogado niyo during the hearing ko sa ganyang panlalawigan. I told him straight to his face. Sabi ko sa kanya, simple yung tanong, will you give our province compensation to damages even without the filing of an administrative or criminal case? Ang daming paligoy-ligoy. Sabi ko niya, just tell me yes or no. Yes or no lang, bakit? You can pay the amount of money na nawala sa amin. Pero di mo kako kayong bayaran ng pagod ko. For 14 days, walang tulog, walang kain, pagod na pagod. I've been receiving visitors every day. Ako, naranas ba ninyo? Pumunta mismo ng oil spill? Gobernador ako, at all ako naglilinis doon. Because I want to give the people the hope that, hey, asa tayo dito, huwag kang mawala ng pag-asa. If your governor can go down that dirt, everybody can. Ang nire-request lang naman natin, simple Simple assurance that you're going to pay us. Your lawyers, kahapon sa insurance, assured us they will. The insurance company, PNI, came to Mindoro yesterday, in, during the hearing of the Sangunian, where I was present, and you categorically stated, this week you are going to establish the claims center. Meaning, magsisimula na kayong tumanggap ng claims for damages this week. Ang sinabi ko lang kahapon sa lawyers nyo, simple. We will not encourage individual claims. We will claim as a local government and we will ensure na yung tao namin, our group, our people will have an individual that can be filed para mas malakas ang aming government. Gob, can I interrupt, Gob? Sige po. Eh, tama nga kanina sinasabi ni Cynthia Villar, ano sila mababayan ng claims samantalang wala naman daw permit to operate yung barco. So we should, we should not be talking about insurance claims here. Yun nga po eh. So, wala tayong makasama insurance. So, tama si Senator Villar kanina, why are we talking about claims? Huwag na natin asahan yun dahil hindi kayo babayaran ng insurance company. You should be honest enough kayo dyan sa, sa ano, ano pangalit po ng barko nyo, kumpanya? RBC, sir. RBC. Dapat, maging honest kayo, from the very start, sinabi nyo sana na, Sensya na, may problema. Wala pa lang permit to operate yung barko namin kaya walang insurance na masisingilid kami. Hindi kami pwede magsingil. Kaya um, tutulong kami kung anong pwede naman magtulong sa abot namin makaya. Pwede niyo pinasahasan niyo si Gob sa pagpapagdala kayo ng ngayon doon para sabihin na kayo yung nag-uumpisa ng pagpapahal ng claims sa inyong insurance company na alam niyo naman pa rin hindi kayo mababayaran. So, anong niyo, ako lang po kayo. Um. Opo, uh, sinasabi nila makakaklaim daw sila sa insurance company. Eh, ako, as a, galing ako sa business eh. Alam mo, yung insurance company, maghahanap yan ng basis para hindi sila magbayad. Yes. I mean, that's that's my opinion. I don't know if this insurance company is something different, di ba? I, I don't, no, I don't, uh, ano, kaya lang, ang gusto kong sabihin, kasi umaasa yung, yung Negros ay yung uh, Mindoro Oriental na sana wag na natin munang asahan kung dumating dumating kung hindi hindi tayong magkakasama tayo na lang ang mag-decide kung ano gagawin natin to soften the blow for uh, Mindoro Kaya kasi Oriental, Madam Chair Madam Chair, okay. Madam Chair kasi lahat ng tao umaasa dun sa insurance kasi malaking bagay kung ito sa 1 billion dollars okay. kasi pinagawin to 50 billion pesos pero okay, I agree with you I used to work for insurance companies in the States before Alam ko yan, na kapag walang permit to operate, ka, walang yung insurance, maghahat ng butas yan para sila makaiwas. Mm. Kung makaiwas mo sila, salamat ko, hindi, at least babaratin. Something like that. Now, in this case, ang butas sa inyo, wala kayong permit to operate. Hindi nyo na-register sa amin yung, yung barko ninyo para maging legit. So, hindi namin babayaran yan. Yun ang gagamitin palusot ng insurance company. Kapag sinabi nyo na kay Gob, hindi pa kayo pasikot-sikot. Madam Chair. Senator Salamat, yeah, Madam Chair. Um, I share yung line of questioning ni na Chair at uh, Sen Tulfo. Imposible namang may krimen laban sa Mindoro Oriental pero walang responsable at walang compensation sa kanila. So balikan ko lang, Madam Chair, yung pinoint out ninyo uh, dito sa accident report ng Marina dun sa section on uh, vessel documents no sa sa section ng factual information sabi niyo nga po may finding ang marina na the ship has no authority to operate in the form of an amendment to its CPC certificate of public convenience issued to RDC Ray Rayald Marine Services Inc 
to operate the MTKR Princess Empress in the domestic trade pursuant to the revised IRRs of Republic Act 9295. So, I, pwede po ba natin malaman sa Marina or sa Coast Guard kung wala ang Marina dito sa ganito mga sitwasyon? Ah, thank you, Madam Chair. Marina, dito, batay po dito sa inyong accident report na kinuot ng Chair. Sa ganito pong mga sitwasyon na wala pa lang uh, amended CPC yung shipping company para i-operate yung ship. Tapos pag nagka mayroon na ganitong sitwasyon, sino po, batay naman sa R yung RA na kinote ko kanina, ang magbibigay ng compensation, for example, sa local government uh, doon or kahit sa mga mangingisda doon? Madam Chair, if my Yung CPC is issued to the company. Ang, sa CPC niyan, nililista ang mga vessels under that CPC. May dagdagdag ka ng isang ano, vessel, you have to amend. Yung, yung RDC, may pending application, which we are going to hear pa sana, may hearing, may kulang na mga documents. So, hear pa natin yan. So, hindi sila naisuhan kaagad. Yun na nga nga. Hindi ko naisuhan ang RDC para makalayag ang ano? para ba sa MPS. Para ma-include sa CPC. Yes, sa by amendment. CPC na nga by amendment. Yes, sir. So, pag kung may amendment na sila dyan, na-include sila, they can, they can ano. So, dapat, sir, kung wala pang amended CPC, hindi pa naidagdag sa CPC ng RDC itong hmm. Princess Empress, Hindi dapat na nakalayag ito. Tama po? Dapat po. Okay, so we also have to find out, Madam Chair, paano ito nakalayag na hindi pa amended ang CPC ng kumpanya. But sir, Marina, in the case, sa ganito pong sitwasyon, nakalayag na po siya, nalubog na po siya, magas na po yung, ano, yung oil, na apektuhang malubha ang Mindoro Oriental at bantang maapektuhan ng, naapektuhan na yung iba pang mga lalawigan at bantang maapektuhan pang iba. Sa ganito pong sitwasyon, sinong tutupad dun sa obligasyon, dun sa batas tungkol sa, uh, oy, uh, kinote ko kanina, hindi ko na mahanap, 9483, uh, yung Oil Pollution uh, Compensation Act. Sino po? Kasi imposible walang may responsibilidad sa Mindoro Oriental. Yung OPE, Oil Pollution Management Fund, may contribution ng its tanker at tanker hauler using persistent oil which is uh, heavy oil yan na hindi nag-evaporate yun or black oil or persistent oil De, yung its nag-hohaul na yan nagbabayad sila ng 10 centavos okay. per liter okay. as of now Ang total fund ng OPMFC OPM, ano, is mabot na ng 63 million. Last Thursday at Friday, nakareceive na ako ng claim ng Coast Guard okay, for, for the cleanup. Ngayon, if they, want to, if they want to claim for damages, uh, the Coast Guard has to file a case in the RTC for that. Pero sa marirelease na namin yung 30 ask, asking ang Coast Guard ng 33 million 557. So mamyang hapon sana po we will meet the oil fund committee will meet to to this to to, to give the amount to for the Coast Guard. Uh, oh, good, good. Just one follow-up at this point, Madam Chair, before I give way kay uh, Sentulfo. Uh, ba balikan ko na lang po, mamaya po yung Marina, pero po sa Coast Guard, Sir Vice Admiral Punsalan, ang po, <coughs> Coast Guard po, siguro nag-conduct ng pre-departure inspection dun sa Port of Bataan. Uh, nag ta ba ng inspection dito sa Princess Empress, ang Coast Guard? Lumalabas po sa investigasyon po na um, may kulang sa kanilang pag-inspect, which is the boarding. Pero nag-conduct nag ng inspection, di umano? Uh, that is what our report says, ma'am. Kaya... Pero sir, mayroon po bang inspection na hindi binoboard yung barko? Yes, please. If I may, madam. Madam Chair, si Vice Admiral Koyme. 
Thank you po, Senator. Monty, Monty Beres, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, as submitted to us uh, during the investigation, there was a submitted document and signed by the boarding team of and ship pastor as far as master safety departure clearance. This is a document and SOP uh, whenever the vessel uh, seek for departure clearance. And secondly, there was a uh, filled up document from the boarding team or the uh, boarding uh, clearing team pertaining to pre-departure pre inspection checklist. Ito po yung fill up po ng mga tao natin whenever they conduct uh, inspection on board. So, these are properly signed by our personnel and uh, acknowledged also by the ship ma master, ma'am. So, Vice Admiral, nakapag-accomplish po sila ng pre-departure inspection checklist. Ibig sabihin, uh, dahil ginamit nila yung form na to, Ibig sabihin, nakapag-inspect sila. As per as our SOP, it should be on board, physical yes, inspection sir. on board the vessel. Pero sabi po kanina ni Vice Admiral Punsalan, uh, kulang kasi kulang yung boarding. Ibig sabihin, hindi po sila nakaboard. And this is what we really want to forward to National Headquarters to conduct administrative investigations pertaining to lapses of our personnel, if, if such is the case, ma'am. Yes, please, sir. Kasi ako layperson, pero wala akong ma-imagine na inspection ng barko na hindi binord ang barko. And so parang dumadami yung mga list of agencies na possibly accountable sa nangyarang ito. Sa kabila ng mga heroic efforts nyo to respond, pero diba sinasabi, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So I'm sure alam na alam na that bago pa nitong hearing at nakoconfirm lang ng hearing namin kina Gov. Dolor yung mga agencies na Dapat sana na napigilan itong mangyari. But uh, at this point, Madam Chair, I'll, I'll give way to okay. the follow-up question of yeah. Tulio. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you, uh, Senator Riza. Uh, tama nga yung mga tanong, katanungan ni Madam uh, ni Senator Riza. Uh, General, anong, anong lang ko niyo po? Mas good advice, Admiral Koy, may po, sir. Okay, sir. Um, sabi niya may sumampa, di po ba? So sa pagsampado ng mga personal ninyo sa barko, Ano-ano po yung mga tinatanong nyo doon? Ano-ano mga dokumentong hinahanap nyo? If I may, uh, Honorable uh, Officer, uh, this is a document uh, accomplished by our personnel who are physically inspecting on board as per our SOP. And we call it the departure inspection checklist. And my long list dito, sir. So, uh, sir, i-shoot ka natin. Huwag na baka buti natin ka mamaya alas 4. Ano lang po, kasama ba doon sa pag-inspect ng permit to operate? Doon sa barkong yun? Uh, we call it, sir, uh, or certificate for convenience bang tawag noon? So, okay, thank you. So, meron po ba kayo? And valid ship safety certificates and documents po, sir. Meron po ba? Uh, uh, ba sa checklist po nila po, sir. Sa checklist, pero yun po ba yung na-check? Oh, nandiyan sa checklist, pero pwede namang nandiyan sa checklist, pero hindi na-check. Wala po check, sir, yung certi certificate of okay. public convenience. So, doon nagkaroon ng kapabayaan. Yun ang sinasabi kanina. Kung hindi lang sana naging pabaya ang mga pao ninyo, hindi na payagan maglayag yun dahil kulang sa dokumento, hindi sana tayo nag-uusap lahat dito ngayon. Period. Yun po yun. So, dapat, yung mga nag-check nyan, suwan at makulong. Dahil sa kapabayaan, dereliction of duty. Diyo ba? Ito yung mga supervisor niyan, kasuhan din. Kasi po, ulit-ulit na lamang ito, Madam Chair, marami na mga barkong nalubog dahil overloaded. And then malaman-laman, di kalaunan, eh, hindi pala in-inspect yung mga taga-Pilipin Coast Guard. Ito ngayon, walang permit to operate, walang karapatan na dapat maglayag itong barkong ito. And yet, nakalusot dahil hindi in-inspect na mabuti, na maayos ng Philippine Coast Guard yung mga requirements needed para itong isang barko ay maglayag. If, he only, if they only did that, wala sa natitay dito ngayon. Yun yun. So next time, wag na po ito mangyari. Dahil kapag nangyari po ito, hindi lang dapat ang kakasuhan yung mga nag-inspect. Yung kumando na siguro kataas-taasan. Dahil paulit-ulit na lang to, Hindi mo ba? Thank you po, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. We recognize the, pre the physical, physical presence of Senator Escudero. You're recognized, Senator Thank you, Madam Escudero. Chair. Just to pursue the point of um, Senator Tulfo, um, sabi niyo po kanina, Senator Tulfo, dapat di na mangyari uli. May I ask the owners of um, the sunken vessel, 
Kailan niyo po binili yung barko at ilang beses na ho ba naglayag ito? The vessel was new. It was built 2022 lang po. Again? It's new. It's a new vessel po. Ito ba yung kauna-unahang beses na naglayag siya? Uh, the one na dumudog po, hindi po. Ilang beses na naglayag ito na wala pang CPC? Hold on, allow me to ask. Please. The point I'm driving at, Senator Tulfo, is anong next time? Ay, nakailang next time na to eh. Yeah, no? That yes. was the ninth voyage po. So it has happened nine times already. So nine times from whatever port it left port, from whatever area it left port, the Coast Guard supposed, was supposed to inspect it, and the Coast Guard saw that there was no amended CPC yet covering this vessel. So kung sakasakali, Senator Tulfo, pangsam, pangsam na to na oversight on the part of Coast Guard. So may we know, ma'am, the areas where it um, left port? Dahil baka iba't ibang sangay o um, supervisor o head ng Coast Guard ang tila na malikmata o tumingin sa ibang lugar at hindi ito pinansin o binati man lang ng some na beses? Um, Your Honor, allow me to consult my team. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, um, hindi ako sigurado dun sa exact words. Pwede nito may team, may Bataan and Manila? Manila. Bataan and Manila? Yes. So may we get a correspondent report as well from the Philippine Coast Guard in regard to these nine um, trips that the, vest, the sunken vessel undertook, still again without the corresponding CPC and why they were allowed? to continue with their voyage. Ma'am, earlier discuss yung insurance. Um, you have an insurance, under the law, you should have an insurance for each vessel, right? Yes, Your Honor. Hindi naman naka-attach po yung insurance sa CPC, di ba? Naka-attach yung insurance sa kada vessel. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Precisely. Um, how are you able to get an insurance without the corresponding amended CPC to include this vessel? As far as I'm concerned, sir, RBC as a company has a CPC. So yung amendment po, we applied as early as November. Um, we, we've submitted all the documents required. Um, the last submission was December. So, kumbaga sa insurance po kasi, we don't ask for the, I think they ask for the CPC, but the CPC, mayroon po kami valid CPC. RDC po. Do we have a representative from the insurance here? From the insurance company? Foreign. A foreign. Um, Ma'am, if you applied in November and made submissions sometime in December, as you said, Yes, sir. When was the first voyage of the ship? Allow me to consult again, Your Honor, just to be Please, sure. Please, ma'am. Sir, can you give us more time or can we go back to that question um, later on? Approximately when? Hindi naman po kailangan yung pecha. December din po, Your Honor. Notwithstanding the absence of an amended CPC. When you completed the submission, nagbiyahe na? Yes, sir. Now, may I ask Marina? Sir, would there be any reason for a company with an existing CPC na bumili ng bagong barko tulad ng kompanyang ito na i-deny nyo yung additional na barko na idagdag sa kanyang existing C C um, CPC? Um, would deny basta kompleto naman yung mga dokumento? No, we cannot. We will grant the, C the amended CPC. Basta makompleto lang yung dokumento. 
Saka after well, ano? I, I ask that question, sir, because my problem is Marina itself in this particular instance because kung tingin ng mga may-ari ng barko, igagrant nyo rin lang naman, makompleto lang. I think that's the, re the reason and basis why they assume na papalayagin na nila dahil ginagrant naman palagi ng marina eh. Mm. Has there been any instance that you denied an application for a new vessel in an existing CPC? Yes, we have. We have. We have. If the if the documents they do not submit the completed documents. Pero once na submit yung completo ng dokumento. In granto, and there is also like a motor tanker. If once you once you pagi pin include mo sa amendment, may capitalization na involved. So kasi dati ay uh, agreed, sir. I understand. I understand. I'm familiar with the industry. Okay. Now my question is. Is there such an animal called provisional license to operate while it is pending before Marina? Okay. We can grant temporary permit or special authority. And there will be amendment of the CPC. Yes, but they did not apply for that. In this instance, um, hindi po kayo nag Walang, hindi nag-issue because walang nag hindi sila nag-apply. Ngayon, kung po lang ba po yung dokumento, kabilang na halimbawa yung mga dokumento na ligtas yung barko, nag-comply sa lahat ng requirements, anong basis po ng pag-grant ninyo sa ibang sitwasyon ng provisional um, authority to operate without the completed documents being submitted as of yet? From what I understand, yung kulang doon ng dokumento, mga financial financial statements at saka bank ano so once complied yan kasi may hearing po pa diyan eh after the ano completion so once complied na yan automatic we, we can immediately issue a cpc Previate the proceedings madam chair may i just ask that um, marina submit to us all pending amendments applications for amendment mm. to the existing cpcs Okay. So that we can cross-reference it with the Philippine Coast Guard kung ano ba yung naglalayag na wala pa namang amendment sa CPC in order to um, fulfill we'll the desire that. of Senator Tulfo that this not happen again under the same circumstances so that we can compare notes. We'll do that, uh, Your Honor. Can we do that, sir? Thank you, sir. Just um, two more points, Madam Chair. Um, may I refer my questions to um, the uh, OCD and the NDRRMC? Um, Shared by, I believe, Secretary Galvez. Um, he's not here anymore? Uh, Secretary Galvez has to do something. So the Who deputy is here. The uh, deputy administrator. Yeah. Asik Alejandro, um, yeah. Governor Bonds and I were both governors before. Um, yung huling kalamidad at trahedya nangyari sa lalawigan ko na ako'y gobernador pa ng lalawigan ng Sorosawan nangyari ng December 2019 sa pamamagitan ng isang bagyo ng pangalan ay Tisoy. Awa ng Diyos, hanggang ngayon ho, wala pang binibigay ang OCD at NDRRMC sa amin. Nasubmit na lahat ng reports, binigay na po lahat, pero makalipas ang tatlong taon, um, wala pa din po. Something must be done on the part of NDRMC. I know it's an interagency body. I know it's um, comprised of secretaries of the various departments, but you must be able to find a way to hasten your procedures in so far as giving assistance. Ang laki-laki ng pondo ninyo sa Calamity Fund, hindi naman nakakarating sa dami at sa hirap mag-comply sa mga requirements. Bilang halimbawa, at alam ni Gov. Bonds to, tinamaan kami ng bagyo, Sempre makalipas ang isa dalawang linggo, alang na namang tumira sa ilalim ng puno yung tao, magiikaos yan, magsusumikap, pagawa yung bahay. Pag nagpunta ang OCD, ang NDRMC, makalipas ang tatlo-apat na buwan, nakatayo na yung bahay, wala na kaming patunay na totally damaged yung bahay. Ganon din to. Nandun yung langis, alang na namang hindi maglinis, intayin kayo magpicture at magdocument para mapatunayan nila na apektado talaga sila, wala silang gagawin. Pag nag-inis ngayon sila at nag-picture kayo, makalipas ang ilang buwan, wala nang patunay na talaga na apekto na tinamaan sila at hindi niyo bibigay yung kineclaim nila. I think it's an unfair situation, gravely unfair situation if you expect people to sip, simply sit idly by, not do anything awaiting your documentation team 
to document the damage um, done. You have to take at some point in time the word of the local government unit for that. Kami naman yung on the ground eh. Napagtama nung bagyo, nandun agad. Good noon, sir. Yes, sir, you're correct. Uh, right now, sir, we are uh, doing the, 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 the review on how we process the request from LGUs. Our standing order from the Office of the President, uh, through the, uh, uh, from the President himself, uh, is to review and uh, incorporate already the, the, the recommendations of our LGUs when we do validation of the request. So we are trying uh, to come up with a new policy or uh, amended uh, memorandum circular on this, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, hopefully within the next uh, few weeks or months, we'll be able to issue that and uh, come up with a, a, a more streamlined uh, process in uh, uh, processing uh, requests from the local government. I'm sorry, ASIC, but that seems to be unacceptable. You've been there for eight and a half months since this new administration sat. And you're asking for a few more months to streamline your procedures and review your procedures. I don't think that is acceptable. Um, Maubos yun na yung halos isang taon ng panunungkulan ninyo. Limang taon na lang ang maiiwan. Ang dami ng kalamidad na tumama at dumaan sa ating bansa. Nasa review process pa rin tayo. Gano'ng karaming pondo ba binabalik niyo sa National Treasury dahil hindi niyo nagagastos? I can give the figures and submit it to the committee, Madam Chair. I just don't have it with me right now. But the point is, you have so much funds actually for calamity and disaster relief, but you have not been able to use it simply because your um, cumbersome procedures. And I'm quite disappointed, Madam Chair, that it's taken eight and a half months and still it's not finished. Hindi ba dapat yun ang unang-unang nagawa o ginagawa ninyo dahil aanin niyo yung mga pondong binigay sa inyo ng Kongreso kung napakatagal naman bago nyo ma-release at i-comply? Can you give us a definite date when these procedures will be streamlined and the corresponding memorandum circular will be issued to streamline these procedures as by way of commitment to this committee, Madam Chair? Uh. Hmm? Mr. Chair, uh, sir? It's okay. It's okay that Secretary Galvez left. I would just presume that whoever he left behind can answer in his behalf. Yes, sir. Um, I cannot give the definite, sir, the definite date uh, when we can finish, but uh, we'll, we'll give a date. Buwan na lang. Yes, sir. Buwan na lang. Wag na date. Wag na araw. Buwan na lang. What month? Again, you've been there for eight and a half months. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll uh, do it in one month, sir. We'll... Actually, we are uh, already finishing our uh, uh, review already, sir. In so, the end of April? Yes, sir. That's reasonable enough? Yes, sir. We have a drop already, sir, on that. That's realistic enough, too? Yes, sir. If I publish pen? Yeah. That's yeah. a memorandum circular, sir. Ah, so, hindi na kailangan i-publish? I-publish, sir. Ah, yeah. So, 15 days after completion yes. of publication or submission sa UP Law Center? Yes, sir. So, hopefully, it'll be effective by May? One month. Yes, sir. Would that be correct? Can you include in your provision a retroactive clause that says that the new and streamlined procedures will also apply to previous and past calamities because since this, are, this is a corrective memorandum circular, Legally, you can apply it retroactively too. Can you specify in your memorandum, sir, that it applies retroactively to previous and other claims filed or made by affected citizens and or local government units? Yes, sir. I will, uh, it will be anchored on the GA provision, sir, that it will apply to the calamities uh, yung two years uh, period, sir, before the uh, two years, no? Two years. Sir, kaya lang naman may limitation ng two years aga kasi after two years, kailangan nyo nang balik yung pera eh. Yes, sir. Di ba? Yun lang naman yung rason nun eh. Yes, sir. Kung wala na sa inyo yung pera, pwede naman kayo humingi ng supplemental budget. But I don't see any reason why it should be limited for to two years only if the claim has not yet been paid. Or the damage has not been repaired as of yet, as we speak, even beyond the two-year period. Kindly look into that, sir. Yes, sir. One last point, Madam Chair. Under RA 9483, the Philippine Coast Guard shall investigate moto proprio or through written undertaking of a complainant any incident claim for compensation. 
and shall forthwith file the appropriate action with the RTC. Has the Coast Guard ever done? Have you ever done this? In previous sea mishaps, have you ever done this? Thank you so much, Honorable Chair and uh, Sen Honorable Senator Escalera, sir. During the incident, the solar well incident, the Coast Guard was the one who filed the cases as to the claims of those uh, affected by the uh, incident. And uh, they were all were able to claim, and even the Coast Guard was able to claim already for that incident through the IOPC fund, sir. This particular instance, do you intend to do the same as well? We will, uh, Your Honor, sir. And this will be filed in the RTC of Mindoro Oriental? Yes, sir. It depends on the legal team uh, where they will be filing, sir. That's okay, what sir. the law says? Yes, sir. It will so be at the court of jurisdiction. The area with jurisdiction where the incident, quote-unquote, occurred? Yes, sir. It will be at the court of jurisdiction, sir. Independently, the LGU can also file. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So, Governor Bonds, you can actually file either... As a province or individually, together with the various municipalities, your claim. But I hope um, that um, whatever happens, government will have your back. Because as, as Chairman Senator Cynthia Villar said, Malabo man yung insurance, sigurado ko kahit maliwanag yun, matatagalan yan. At um, lugmok na sa kahirapan, gutom na at wala nang hanap buhay at kinakayan yung ating mga kababayan sa Mindoro Oriental, hindi pa rin darating insurance bagaman gusto nila magbayad. So kinakailangan talaga ang tulong at ambag ng national government. Gayun din ang uh, mga ahensya ng pamahalaan dahil maliwanag. Madam Chair, I'd like to place it on record. Walang LGU, kahit gano kayaman, kahit Cebu pa yan, kahit Negros Occidental, kahit na Cavite, Batangas o Laguna. Mayayamang lalawigan sa ating bansa ang kakayanin ang ganitong uri ng problema sa kung na nanaganap, kung saan apektado. Siyam sa labing tatlo, tama ba? Siyam sa labing limang munisipyo ng lalawigan ng um, Misamis um, Oriental. Amindoro Oriental, sorry. Last point on DNR. Ma'am? What is the DNR doing by way of planning sa pag-cleanup? Are you taking the lead in so far as the plans and programs of the cleanup is concerned? O kanya-kanya, bahala na si Batman. Thank you very much, uh, um, Mr. Senator. Yes, the DNR has taken the lead, although we do conform to the protocol under the NOSCOP or in the PCG, the Philippine Coast Guard is the overall team leader. We have designed our own programs and we have also liaised them with the local governments as well as the different uh, bureaus of the department. They will be put in our presentation. Now, ma'am, under the law, I'm referring to Republic Act number 9275. Um, the cleanup that will be under, should be undertaken by the guilty party, in this case, the ship owner. But government cannot sit idly by and can actually do some things. Under the law as well, the one I mentioned, you can ask that all of your expenses, the expenses of government, be paid by the liable party. I ask this question because are you coming up with a tab as to how much we have spent so far, including MAMA, not only the cleanup, but also what was lost by way of income of those whose properties were affected, or even if their properties were not affected, by way of lost earnings too. Dahil na apektuhan pa rin sila nung oil spill. Who is keeping tabs on this? Magkano ginagasos ng Coast Guard? Magkano ginagasos ng Marina? Magkano ginagasos ng DNR? Magkano ginagasos ng LGU? DSWD, who is keeping tabs, ma'am? Is it DNR? DNR is keeping tabs of its own account, sir, uh, because we technically fall under a protocol that is led by the, by the Coast Guard, but we are keeping tabs, and uh, as Governor Bonds knows, we have been closely coordinating with the LGU on this. So as far as the DNR, po, we have done three things. If I may just jump towards our 
our, our presentation. We have done the disaster forensics, sir, together with the UPMSI. We are now looking at the remediation costs, and we're also looking at the valuation po for the lost ecosystem services because of the impact assessment that continues to be ongoing, sir, because the spill continues. So we are doing the economic valuation based on methodologies that we have at the department, but we are also keeping tabs, sir, just to reassure you on what we have spent so far. This is the first time I'm hearing something like this, actually, because I'm sure if I ask Gov Bonds, Gov, um, how much have you spent so far? What you'll tell me most likely is how much you appropriated by way of relief and cleanup. But you cannot put a monetary value in so far as mobilizing the people of the provinces, municipalities, and barangays are concerned. Would that be correct? Correct, Senator. May I ask the Coast Guard, ilang barko ang pinadala nyo para, para maglinis sa cleanup, sa containment and cleanup? We deployed uh, our heli one helicopter, our uh, Cessna plane, and uh, about... Uh, Sir, how many trips seven, was the cost of the vessels. how many trips was the cost of the gasoline, and what is the man hours cost as well? At planning where and tear on Cessna helicopter, do you have a way of computing it? We will be computing it, sir, and we will be sending it to the good senator, sir. Thank you, sir. No, but do you have an, an SOP like yes, sir, we, have, we, have, we have, sir. We have, sir. We have. Sir. You do? Yes, sir. Thank Kindly you, sir. submit that, please, you, sir. sir, as you as you go along. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. In order for us to have basis for the claims that will be made. May I give the same advice to the local government unit, both the province and the municipalities, um, in order for us to have a basis to file a claim um, before the funds that are available to us under existing laws, treaties, and conventions? That would be all, Madam Chairman. Thank you, and I'd like to thank our invited guests and resource persons. Thank you also to the um, family of the ship owner for answering our questions. Thank you, Senator Oscudero. Uh, we just want to give an opportunity for Governor Dolor to say something. Thank you. Um, um, we leave to the sense of the Senate, the side of investigation, finding the guilt, finding the uh, non-performance of laws. It's your turf. Our concern um, in the local government is where are we going after this as far as our constituents are concerned. If I hear the I, I was I was so sad to hear what attorney from Marina said, Hernan, that there is a fund that they have around 63 million, and that even without Coast Guard filing a case against this uh, issue, Coast Guard has already filed a claim using that insurance. I appreciate it. I appreciate so much the efforts of Coast Guard, especially when Commodore Tobilia arrived last Friday upon my request to, com to Commandant Abu. But ma'am, it pains me so much to hear that Coast Guard filed a claim for your cleanup. Even out without taking first the concerns of the local government, directly affected, losing jobs and livelihood of the people. It's your job to do this cleanup. How can you claim first for yourselves? File your claim for your for your agency. Why not file first for the for the lost livelihood of our people? Bakit hindi mo na yun sana na walang trabaho namin? Sana hindi na ino na niyo iklaim. Kung tama po, hindi ko malungkot sa akin yun kasi yung mga genuine trabaho niyo naman talaga mag-inis. Pero inunan ninyo munang iklaim yung gastos niyo kaysa doon sa pamasahin ng mga tao namin, pantwiso ng tao namin. I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, pero masakit sa akin bilang gobernador. Kami ang apektado ng lahat ng ito habang nagkakagulo sa permitting. Pinayagan ninyo sa marina na makabuhay, wala pa ng CPC. Pinayag mo niyo sa Coast Guard sa Bataan na makabiyahin nine times without amended CPC. Kami na may problema sa Oriental Mindoro, hindi na niyo ang claim mo. 
Makatao po ba yun, Madam Chair? Kami hindi kami naghahanap ng fault dito, bahalang kayo dyan maghanap. Pero apat ang concern namin, una, matagpuan ang barko. Salamat sa Namria, salamat kay Sekretary Loisaga. Tawag ni Sekretary Gatsalian ang pumukaw sa inyong damdamin para ipadala agad. Dahil sabi niyo, hindi malinaw ang usapan ng Coast Guard sa inyo. Six hours after that, dumating ang Gressel. Thank you, Namria. Thank you, BNR. Ang sulit na kailangan natin papasukin ng ROV. Hindi ko to trabaho, trabaho to ng Coast Guard na magpapasok ng ROV dito. Pero sino gumagawa ng paraan? Sino tumatawag kay Sekretary Bautista? Sino kumakausap sa PS, uh, PCG? Sino kumakausap sa PPA? Bureau of Quarantine. Si Gopal Lordelor, Sambado, Linggo, Pumiper man ang sulat. Kailangan nagpapalit na naman ang insurance company natin ng barkong gagamitin from Chinese to Singaporean to Japanese. Ginagawa niyo kung sekretaryat. Palit ako ng palit ng sulat just to facilitate the arrival of this vessel sa ROV. It's not my job. Nobody's in charge. Nobody's not... That's why, ma Madam Senator, I'm the one taking care because this is my province. Thirdly, Aside from the ROV's arrival, ang concern ng Oriental Mindoro po, huwag nang makarating sa tabi ng dagat, tabi ng, ng, ng pangpang namin ang oil. Pero walang malinaw na plano. Buti na lang dumating yung bagong uh, bago kubador namin. Ngayon, nagaanan ako ng konti. Thank you, thank you, Admiral, uh, Admiral Abu. Nagbigyan mo ako sa request kong ipadala mo si Commodore Tobilian. May kapartner na ako ngayon sa incident ko ng toast namin. Kami ni na Mayor, walang tulog. Si Mayor Ingat ako. Walang gulo. Kami nahanap natin sa got sa tanong sa mga yung hearing nito ng Senado. Anong malinaw na plano para hindi makarating ng tabi ng dagat ang Holy Spirit? Local government na nagmanis kayo imagine palapa ng nyug. Ang mga mayors namin, nagpaputol ng palapa ng nyug, nagpaputol ng coconut husk para mapigil. Eh kung ito muna sana ang kinuha ng insurance ng Coast Guard, yun ang mas mabilis. And then lastly, yung ating response on cleanup drive. Thank you sa DSWD, thank you sa DENR, thank you kay TESDA, thank you kay Dole, thank you kay President. Thank you din kay Coast Guard in fairness naman sa inyo. Pero sana, sana hindi kami ang nahihirapan to manage all of this. Inak na sa amin yung bugbog ng tao namin. Sana yun man lang trabaho ng national government may mag-take charge talagang maliwanag. Thankful ako, Commodore Tobilia, you, you handle it well. Kaya lang, it's not enough. You're not the entire team. The national government should be there, one whole team. Kaya ang request ko, Madam Chair, mga Senador, kay Secretary Galvez kanina, baka naman po po pwede. Yung NDRRMC, sabay-sabay mag-usap, Isang cabinet dadating sa amin, thank you. Isang cabinet dadating sa amin, thank you. Isang cabinet dadating sa amin, thank you. Hindi ba pwedeng sabay-sabay? Hindi ba pwedeng isang upo lamang natin? Hindi ba pwedeng sampung chopper yung dadating sa amin lalawigan at mag-usap tayong sampo? Inassure po ako ni Secretary Galvez before he left. We will host you there. Dumating kayong lahat. Yung regional directors na wala akong masabi. Napakaayos. DOH napakaayos. Pero ang request ko lang po, This, in the, with the indulgence, Madam Senator, Madam Chair, with the indulgence and with the leadership of NDRRMC and Coast Guard, isang meeting ng lahat ng cabinet secretary sa Mindoro gawin, para dun pa lang malinaw, ito, 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 isang bagsak natin. We know that the government is doing its... its ang kailangan lang natin dito ngayon, mas mabilis na aksyon. Sabi niyo, wag na muna kaming aasa sa insurance. Malungkot po sa amin yon ako naniniwala pa rin sa so, biyaya ng Diyos, baka sakaling may magmilagro, may authority na po kami mag-file ng aming claims, pero sabi ng insurance kahapon, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Sabi ninyo sa amin, gusto ninyo mag-file kami ng claim na walang asunto sa korte. I will give you the benefit of the doubt for this week. The insurance company yesterday promised us you will put up claims this, this week. I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Concern ng local government namin, malinis na ito. Huwag nang makarating sa dagat, sa lupa at makakain kami. Pero after one week at walang nangyari, tandaan po ninyo, mababay po ang taga Mindoro. Pero huwag nyo sagari ng pasensya ng mamamayan namin. Ako, ang aking mga punong bayan at ang mamamayan namin, we follow government rules. But you cannot expect all of us to wait until the arrival of the Messiah, we will do whatever we can 
within our grasp, mandate, power, and initiative. Make sure that there is a resolution on this case. Thank you very much, Madam Senator. Uh, we'll just be at the receiving end ngayon. Makikinig na lang po kami. After all, kung sino may kasalanan, parusahan, kami po ang concern namin, yung mamamaya namin mabigyan ng mga kunabukasan after all of this. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Salamat po sa mga senador natin. Mala maraming salamat, Governor Dolor. Uh, before uh, Secretary Galvez left, she, he assured me that uh, there is an, uh, a fund that will NDRMC fund that they will give you. So he promised me. So he always keep his promise. Okay. So we recognize Senator Ontiveros. Salamat po, Madam Chair. At uh, ako po bilang apo ng Mindoro Oriental ay uh, buong pusong nakikiisa dun sa uh, panawagan ni Gov. Uh, at maasa ako, Madam Chair, na sa pamamagitan ng komite natin at yung pag-uusap nyo ng uh, chair ng NDRMC, mangyayari po yung hinihiling nilang National Government Integrated Response. Kasi po talagang nangyayari sa, sa amin ay emerging humanitarian crisis. So, yun po. Um, one quick manifestation for the record bago yung mga tanong ko. Hawak ko po, Madam Chair, yung pre-departure inspection checklist for tanker ship ng Philippine Coast Guard. Ito po yung para sa Princess Empress. And hindi lang po isa, ito po yung boxes dito na walang check dun sa table na complete and valid ship safety certificates and documents. So, isa na po, unang-una, yung Certificate of Public Convenience, CPC. Hindi po talaga nakacheck. And nakasulat po dito sa table, isa ito sa items, isa ito sa certificate na, if not valid, detainable. And pito po yung ganyan na, if not valid, detainable. Yung isa ay, if if no, to be rectified. And yet, kahit kulang ng pitong check sa checklist ay nakalayag nga, nakapalaot at nangyari nga ito sa Mimaropa at pati sa, sa Western Visay. So for the record, Madam Chair, uh, document po mismo ng Coast Guard. So yung una ko pong tanong, Madam Chair, uh, actually follow up na lang sa nauna ng mahalagang inputs ni uh, Sec. Uh, uh, Yululoy Saga sa DNR. Um, salamat dun sa sinabi nyo sa aming chair na ifa-furnish nyo yung komite ng uh, ulat ninyo tungkol sa trahedyang ito. Kasi uh, I appreciate na hindi po tayo nagpapaligoy-ligoy. We really want to know gano'n ba kasama ito at gano'n kalaki yung scope ng, ng damage. I wonder if you want to add anything to that, Sec. Yes po. Um, thank you, Senator. Uh, we do have a presentation po that is composed of several parts, including our colleagues from UPMSI who are characterizing the hazard uh, with the help of the Philippine Space Agency and uh, NOAA sa US po. So if with your indulge, indulge po, we have uh, actually a complete presentation on what the DNR has done. All right, Madam Chair, if, if the Chair wishes, uh, we, we could see the presentation before I continue with my question. Salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and, and Senator Antiveros. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, sec, if I may just add my, I just had a, a last question. Baka pwede nyo na rin pong tukunan in the course of the presentation na gano pong katagal at ano pong requirements in terms of human, technological, and financial resources para maglunsad po tayo ng honest to goodness clean up at rehabilitate po yung mga affected areas bukod po sa damage assessment, later on bukod po sa pagbuo uh, ng rehabilitation plan, ano pong papel ang ginagampanan ng DENR sa oil spill clean up mismo? Salamat. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Senator Antiveros. Just to answer your last question first, we cannot calculate the full cost of this incident until the hazard is actually finished. And so that will continue po for as long as the oil continues to spill. Uh, Madam Chair, if the, if the leak is not plugged, the flow uh, as estimated by the uh, UPMSI will continue for the next probably two weeks. If the if the leak is not plugged, and I will leave Paul Dr. Cesar Villanoy of the UP Marine Science Institute to describe the rate of the spillage at kung saan po sa data po. It's very clear po sa kanilang models, uh, and we 
base our uh, intervention both on the ground to mitigate and a projection for the cost on the science that is provided by the UP Marine Science Institute and our colleagues in the different bureaus. So our, our uh, presentation po is composed of several parts. The hazard, the exposure and vulnerability of both uh, air and water, as well as biodiversity, both the ecosystems, so all the different aspects of the ecosystems, the coral reefs, the seagrass, etc., will be described in our presentation po. And just be before you present make the presentation sec, salamat dun sa time frame na binigay nyo ng two weeks. Kasi within the two weeks, asok na po yung sinasabing two days within which baka umabot yung oil spill pati sa Verde Island Passage. Actually, uh, Senator Po, if we may clarify, and Dr. K. Willanoy will be the one to explain that as the winds change po, the direction of the flow will also change. And that's when the Verde Island Passage will be the most vulnerable. So ito po ang... Uh, the introduction lang po to our presentation is we are risk-based in our analysis and therefore in our interventions as well as our economic valuations. These are all based on what we call hazard exposure and vulnerability analysis. The team is composed of several groups inside the DNR and our partners at the UP Marine Science Institute, as well as the support that we are getting from the Philippine Space Agency, from NOAA, and that's the US and NASA uh, space uh, technologies that are being made available, the products that are being made available to us. So if I may, Paul, uh, just go to the next slide. I will introduce uh, the different presenters. Uh, we have three components, the, the context for our work, the NAMRIA updates, and in between, sir, and Madam Chair, we will uh, hear from UPMSI on their particular hazard analysis, which is the basis for our work. Then uh, NAMRIA, of course, will also present its findings. So NAMRIA, UPMSI, and our Bureau updates, both Environmental Management Bureau and the Biodiversity Management Bureau that are on this incident, Paul. So to turn over, Paul, to the presenter, I will introduce Under Secretary De La Pena, who will give us the context of our work to be followed by NAMRIA and to be followed by UPMSI and the bureaus. Under Secretary, Paul. Madam Chair, uh... Madam Secretary, uh, good afternoon. Allow me to briefly describe the context and basis for the actions of the department in connection with the oil spill response operations. Next slide, please. PD602 establishes the National Operations Center for Oil Pollution under the Philippine Coast Guard and the Marine Pollution Decree of 1976 grants the PCG and the National Pollution Control Commission, now the Environmental Management Bureau under the DNR, the joint responsibility to address marine pollution. Further, the Philippine Clean Water of 2004, the DNR, PCG, and DA shall enforce water quality standards in marine waters. As per the National Oil Spill Contingency Plan, or NOSCOP, the PCG's role is as an agency in command of the overall oil spill response with other agencies or organizations mandated to play their respected support rules. Next slide. Pursuant to the support mandate of the DNR, immediately after the occurrence of the oil spill, the department under the leadership of Secretary Loisaga established the task force for the MT Princess Empress oil spill. The task force follows the Incident Command System, or ICS, organizational structure, placing key undersecretaries in command with the support of assistant secretaries down to the regional executive directors, regional directors, the provincial and community environment and natural resources, among others. The main objective of the task force is to implement all necessary strategic and tactical actions in order to facilitate the immediate and long-term risk management strategies to mitigate the impacts on ecosystems and marine and coastal biodiversity. Next. Shown are the three parallel work streams of the department in response to the oil spill. Next slide, please. Disaster for M6, knowing the scientific circumstances in connection with the oil spill, by specifying the environmental hazards, the vulnerabilities, and risks associated with the incident. Cleanup, mitigation, and remediation, habitats and ecosystems protection and regeneration. 
shown the DNR further follows the three levels for response escalation. Level one, which govern actions within or near the seepage area. Level two, actions in Pola and Wuhan, as well as other coasts. Uh, level three, actions in areas beyond Mindoro. Clarificatory question, Madam Chair, you say? Yes, ma'am. Pareho po ba ito or iba ito sa, sa tier one, tier two, tier three ng Coast Guard? It's uh, different, ma'am. This is uh, the levels. The levels are following the MSI, UPMSI tiered response. Next slide, please. Having organized the task force, the following are the immediate actions of the department. First, coordinated with the LGUs affected, including the governor and mayors of, of affected communities, municipalities, released information to the public, instru instructed Namria to deploy the, the BRPH Ventura to locate the sunken tanker, conducted air inspection, site visits and monitoring with UPMSI and field operations teams, conducted water and air quality assessment, conducted biodiversity and rapid assessment, conducted coastal and mangrove cleanup operations and proper waste disposal, deployed technical experts for rapid impact assessment and valuation. Next slide. Arranged cash for work for coastal cleanup with SWD and SOLE, coordinated with congressmen for situation updates, coordinated response priorities and anticipatory action with PCG, DOTR, and the RMC, SWD, DOLE, DEB4, DNDOCD, DILG, DOT, DOH, and the LGUs conducted a dialogue with local communities together with the DOH, DSWD, and DILG, sourced out support from private organizations, non-government partners, and assisting countries, briefed the president regarding updates on the ground, submitted daily situational reports for the president through the office of the executive secretary. Next slide. To further elaborate the DNR actions, here is a matrix describing the chronology of the incident timelines vis-a-vis -vis DNR response. At the onset of the incident, when the tanker was initially half-submerged on February 28, the DNR, through its regional office, already coordinated with initially the LDUs and the PCG for situation updates and monitoring. Subsequently, specific response activities were undertaken by the department to name a few, the highlights include the initial meetings by the Secretary with the PCG, the Oriental Governor Dolor, and Nauan Mayor Tevez on March 1, Monday, immediately after learning about the incident. On March 3, the Secretary DNR, together with other key officials, did an initial aerial assessment and visited Ground Zero. The Secretary also briefed the President on the same day and subsequently made direct coordination with the Secretaries of the DSWD, the DOT, the DOLE, among others in the next, next days. The Department also established linkage with the NDRRMC. Next slide. Here's the continuation of the timelines, which on March 5, the task force met with local officials at Pola also it was the day that the Ramria located the possible location of the tanker. On March 6, there was the public announcement about the possible location of the sunken tanker as located by the Namria. On March 7, the Secretary met with the local officials at Pola, followed by another briefing for the President. In the next days, important meetings were undertaken as shown. Presently, there remains the increasing risk to affected areas, leading to the continuous effort for assessment, containment, and cleanup. Madam Chair, if I may just um, uh, add to the the presentation as already uh, given by Undersecretary De La Pena, we note, please, that on March 2, we had authorized the deployment of the hydrographer vessel to locate the sunken vessel where it is actually um, lying. Po. The importance of this is to determine how the oil will actually be spilling based on possibly the location as identified by the Namria vessel. So I wish to credit this to the advice of the UPMSI to actually first locate where the vessel actually is in order for us to be able to project the spillage that will occur because of the, the damage to the vessel. So UPMSI advised us on this. We mobilized on March 3 
uh, after the authorization on March 2. And by March 4, the, the vessel was deployed, our hydrographer vessel, BRP Ventura. And by March 5, despite the inclement weather and early morning, they were able to capture data, which they later analyzed uh, to actually be the possible site of the sunken vessel. So there will be a report by Namaria on this directly. And sekta na po ba na yung tumatagas pa lang ay yung fuel ng ship mismo, hindi pa yung cargo nila na 800,000 liters? At this point po, the, the um, estimation is that the cargo is already spilling. So it's not just the initial sheens po uh, where the fuel of the ship, but uh, the quality of what we see on shore uh, is also an indication of the cargo actually already spilling. Um, so we're racing against para isil yung dalawang leaks na yon. So, yes, yes, ma'am. Although we don't know that there are two leaks, uh, the recommendation from the Maria, which will be uh, presented by by Undersecretary Chanko, would be to actually have the ROV confirm uh, the, the findings that uh, BRP Ventura actually submitted. Salamat po. Thank you po. Next slide, please. My last slide shown is the Highlights of accomplishment by the numbers, ma'am. So, so just to just to conclude, Bo, from Undersecretary, these are ongoing, and to answer your question on damage assessment, we are using uh, several evaluation methods. One of them is the method that was used when there was damage to Bataha Reef to actually calculate what the cost might be. However, on the long-term impact on fisheries income, BFAR would be the essential partner po in determining this. And so uh, we're looking forward to working closely with them on uh, our findings as well as theirs po. So, so if I may, um, maybe introduce uh, Undersecretary Peter Tianco, who will give the briefing on the location of the vessel. Thank you very much. Secretary Yulo Loisaga, esteemed chairperson of the Senate Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change, Senator Sincha Villar, equally honorable members of the Senate, Secretary Loisaga and colleagues from the DNR, fellow public servants, distinguished guests, good afternoon. I will be presenting a brief report on the multi beam graphic surveys undertaken by Namriya, and this was done by one of its survey vessels, the BRP hydrographer Bantura, to locate the sunken, the sunken empty princess empress. Upon arrival at the search site at 1.35 a.m. of March 5, 2023, BRPH Ventura immediately ran parallel and perpendicular survey lines on the reported last position of empty Princess Empress. After covering an area of about seven square kilometers, the vessel has to withdraw from the site because of very rough seas. Nonetheless, after the survey data was processed, a feature whose profile is very similar to the sunken ship was detected. Next slide. Next slide. The ship returned to the search site on March 8, 2023, and surveyed a larger area. The same feature was detected, and we believe this is the sunken ship based on the dimensions and its proximity to the last reported position, MP Princess Empress. Here are the processed images of the feature that was detected. The length, breadth, and height are similar to those empty Princess Empress. Furthermore, there is no reported sinking or shipwreck in the area since it was mapped in 2008. Next slide, please. The sunken ship is in an upright position and oriented South, 44 degrees east. Next slide, please. Here is a summary of the report on BRPH Ventura. It surveyed a total area of 39 square kilometers 
and detected the feature at latitude 13 degrees, 19 minutes, 8.67 seconds north, and longitude 121 degrees, 31 minutes, 33.07 seconds east. It is located at a distance of 13.89 kilometers northeast of Balingawan Point, Municipality of Pura, Province of Oriental Mindoro. It is lying on the seabed in an upright position at a depth of 389.1 meters. Its current location is 264.7 meters southeast of the last position of anti Princess Empress. Next slide, please. Here is a comparison of the dimensions of the anti Princess Empress and the shipwreck. They have almost the same length and breadth. The difference in height will be due to the height of the ship's mast. Next slide, please. Finally, here is a map showing the location of the sunken ship. Next slide, please. Here is the location of the sunken ship as depicted on the official nautical chart of the area. And uh, finally, uh, we are recommending for the deployment of a remotely operated underwater vehicle for more conclusive endings. That ends my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yusek Chanko. Uh, we've been advised to just uh, shorten our presentation, so we have opted to hear the presentation of UPMSI. The work of the, D the DNR EMB and BMB is equally important, po, ma'am, so you can see the impacts that we are seeing on the ground. So hopefully, Po, we'll have the opportunity to present those uh, to you. EMB and BMB are here with a full presentation. But if we may, just so we can characterize the hazard and the risk moving forward, we would like to call our colleagues and our partners at UPMSI, Dr. Cesar Villanoy, uh, if he can make the presentation on the current status of our of our hazard. Okay, please. In chair, sec, just one yes. quick. So it's 390 meters. So he get isang libong feet po yun. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma Dr. Villanoy, please. Hello. Um, Hello. Hello. Uh, good, good afternoon po, um, um, Secretary. And good afternoon, Madam Chair. Um, shall I share or... Um, Doc, if you may, please. Yeah. Ah, pala. Na po. This is ah, hindi, a Coast Guard na presentation. Maybe Q. Uh, Doc, would you like to share in the interest of time? Okay, okay, see. So I'll just uh, skip the first few slides because we all know location and the background. Nito, no? So um, we've been receiving uh, satellite images from NOAA and uh, also FILSA is already compiling and analyzing several images. But one thing that we can see from the images is uh, um, the, the seepage from the sunken vessel is continuing and uh, it is all going towards the coast of Nauhan and uh, Alo. Um, and, and this is because of uh, Amihan winds. Huh? Uh, so what we see in the images are actually uh, just a portion of what is actually released. No? So we tried running a, a oil weathering model, which is uh, developed by NOAA also, on the what happens to bunker sea oil when you release that to the surface. And it says here that the model shows us that in the first five days, 9% uh, is lost to evaporation. 70% is, is dispersed, so na, na, na may mix with the water and again emulsify or it's, uh, it breaks up into smaller, smaller uh, uh, spills. And what, what remains is just 22%. So what we see at the surface is just a fraction of what is actually released. So we don't know, we, we cannot compute how much uh, oil is seeping from, from the ship. Um, because even if we see different sizes of uh, the oil slicks at the images, they're mostly a function of the wind. Kung malakas ang hangin, mas lumiliit yung slick. Pag kalma yung hangin, mas lumalaki yung slick. So this is the uh, oil spill trajectory model we use. This is the model used by NOAA for 
oil spill uh, uh, response. Um, and input data, we get currents from uh, global models of, of circulation and ocean currents, and we also get the winds from the global forecast system. No? So, um, so re one long reminder lang na all these are global models, so medyo coarse yung resolution nila, no? hindi, hindi natin masyadong ma-resolve some of our smaller islands. And we also specify the spill type, so either an area source or a point source. So these are the first few models that we run. Um, ito yung, itong nasa left, ito yung uh, when uh, uh, Secretary uh, uh, Loisaga flew, flew to, to, uh, to the area and they were able to identify itong slick na nakikita dito. And then there were also reports of, uh, of oil along the southern coast. So, so we use this as input to models and we um uh it showed that uh, the spill was mostly going south uh reaching semirara and kaluya islands and then eventually going to kuyo and uh um the uh, if you run the model some more and you will see that it ends up in uh, um mainland palawan tai tai area and uh the model estimated that uh, uh, the oil will reach Tai Tai in uh, March 12th. And uh, last Sunday, we got the reports that uh, the, they found oil in Tai Tai. Um, so we also tried running a, a, a model where there was continuous seepage from, from the ship. Um, and uh, because of the strong influence of the Amihan, um, most of the oil coming from the ship will end up along the Nauhan and uh, Polar coast. So unless the, the wind changes, um, unfortunately, Nauhan and Polar will continuously receive oil if the seepage is not stopped. So these are... Um, some of the currents for March 10, uh, March 10 to 19, and we can see that um, the currents in this area are starting to move towards the west and towards the northwest. Now, previously, the week after the spill, the currents were moving south, but here in this uh, in this uh, um, model, they were starting to move towards uh, towards the Verde Passage. Um, um, sometime next week. No? And uh, these are also the winds. The winds are still blowing uh, from the northeast. So, Amihan season pa rin hanggang sa 19. No? So, malaki ang tulong ng Amihan to, uh, to limit the, the spill uh, in a small area. Unfortunately, yun nga, ang, ang Nauhan and Pola were bear the brunt of the the spill um so if we if we run the model without the wind with just the currents ganito yung mangyayari no um the oil will start to move towards uh, vip um towards kalapan and entering uh, the verde island passage no pero um, so the currents are already moving uh, northwest, but if you you add the wind, malaki talaga ang influence ng wind. Um, so critical na na, na makontain talaga yung yung seepage o yung leak from the ship before the Amihan stops. Otherwise, other areas may be affected. So, ito yung aming uh, main uh, messages that we we've, uh, we've uh, derived from the analysis that the currents, ocean currents, nothing are already showing shift towards the VIP. Um, so, <clears throat> if you run the oil trajectory with just the currents, then definitely it will end up in the VIP. Uh, fortunately, the winds are still amihan, <clears throat> so ganun pa rin yung pattern niya. It's still blowing towards the southwest. Um, pero yun nga, we are at the end of the Mihan season. Um, I don't know when it will end. Um, maybe Pagasa can uh, can give us an idea when. 
Um, pero typically after Holy Week kasi nagiging summer conditions na yun eh. <clears throat> so maybe that's the that's our window. Uh, we also need uh, continuous monitoring along the coast for the presence of oil because we need this to initialize trajectory models, <clears throat> especially in areas um, medyo, na medyo malayo from, uh, from the spill site. So, <clears throat> so marami pa rin limitations sa model. It's still prone to errors. Um, pero yun nga, it's our best available information at the moment. And uh, I think uh, the main point here is we really need to stop the seepage from the Salkin Bethel. Thank you very much, Dr. Villanoy. Uh, as I said, we are driven by the science that we are actually tapping uh, UPMSI as our partners. So there are two types of actions, uh, Madam Chair, that we are taking. The immediate remediation for what has already impacted us and anticipatory action to warn based on the different models, the different LGUs that will actually be affected or may actually be affected because of the change in the winds and the current. With the indulgence, Paul, Madam Chair, I will ask the bureaus, they have done great work uh, to be very quick about their report uh, on on-the-ground remediation and, of course, the next steps uh, in terms of needs with your indulgence, Madam Chair, uh, both EMB and BMB are here to actually report on their work. Yes, Madam. Just a quick follow-up, Madam Chair, uh, sec at this point in time, dun sa sinabi ni Dr. Villanoy na it's critical to stop the seepage before the Amihan stops on 19th March or basta before Holy Week. Sabi nila ito yung window. And well, dumadaan na sa Kalbaryo ang Mindoro Oriental sure. eh, para mas magkaroon sila ng ang probinsya namin ng resurrection at para mailigtas yung iba pa. Um, maybe, well, we'll really be, the committee will really be waiting for the recommendations from you. Ano yung urgent course of action you know, within these next oh my god six days one week yes, madam uh, that we can that the legislature can support salamat po yes um, madam chair senator uh, we will be presenting what we have done so far unfortunately our assumption is that we will not be able to stop the seepage so we will act as if we are on the worst case scenario po uh, in order to uh, present our needs assessment also in terms of the collaboration between the different NGAs and, of course, with, uh, with the work of uh, Mayor Delore and Mayor Ina and the rest of our distinguished um, mayors po sa, sa Min Oriental Mindoro. Uh, if we may, po, we will uh, be very brief so to, to respect the time element. But, um, Madam, I think you should hear uh, the air and water assessment results as well as the potential biodiversity impacts um, that have been already mapped by our Biodiversity Management Bureau and our EMB. Po. So, if we may turn over to uh, EMB, uh, Assistant Secretary Gilbert. Yes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and other members of the dishonest body. Um, in response to the on speed incident, the DNR EMB immediately dispatched monitoring teams in the area. In fact, we, as early as March 1, we've already started the monitoring of the water quality. Um, in the course of the monitoring, um, we established immediately 10 stations um, in, in the, along the coastlines of Oriental Mindoro and in the affected uh, uh, coastal areas of uh, Similari Islands. And uh, our initial uh, results during the period of March 1 to 8, we have, uh, we have uh, exceedances in the water quality guidelines for oil and grease in these areas that we have taken samples. Also, we're doing air quality monitoring uh, in some areas in the affected, uh, affected in Oriental Mindoro. And we're, we're doing uh, sampling both in the Samari Islands, also in Oriental Mindoro, and we're focusing more on the H2S and VOC to determine what are the conditions is affected by the um, deteriorating conditions uh, resulting in the coastlines um, in the presence of the oil. And along with it, we're doing also cleanup. In, uh, uh, we have initiated cleanup works in the coastlines. And then we're collecting oil, uh, oil waste and con oil contaminated materials that have been washed down on the shorelines. And uh, can, initially, we... can I ask a question? I guess, Mama. Uh, kasi I read something na wala daw TS sto treatment storage disposal facility ang Mimaropa. And so yung mga kinukuha yung waste, didalhin nyo pa sa Central Luzon and Calabar Zone. Totoo ba yun? Uh, yes, ma'am. 
the eh, absence. Baka, what do we do about that? I mean, I, I guess uh, in the next budget, you have to build a TSD facility in Mimaropa. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Uh, nagkataon lang po, oh. wala po sa Mimaropa that are available ng TSD facilities. So we're now depending on the nearest TSD facilities that can and be made the available. Nearest? We're, we're this, there's one in, uh, in Batangas that's serving for Port okay. Royal. So, ma'am, we have already collected about 78.5 drums in uh, Mindoro and 3,100 liters in Mirara Islands. All of the uncontaminated uh, waste and uh, and oil waste that has been collected during the initial cleanup in these uh, coastal areas. So we're continuing to do cleanups and then we're gathering more of this waste. Ball. That's all for EMBO. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, ma'am, uh, sorry, one slide back, please. Uh, with your indulgence, uh, my apologies to Governor Dolor. I misspoke earlier. I said Mayor Po. Gov, sorry, Po. <laughs> Um, and so this is just a, a chart, really, actually a diagram showing the cash for work mobilization pod that we spoke about earlier. This is in the collaboration with the DOLE and the DSWD pod, so under the direction of, of governor, so that we can actually stage the resources uh, to the optimization uh, plan of the, of the LGU. Uh, next slide, please. So may I please introduce... Um, who's doing the ASEC Mar Samaro, who will be doing the Biodiversity Management Bureau updates for. Thank you, Madam Secretary, Your Honorable Madam Chair, Your Honors, uh, colleagues in the DNR, fellow workers in the government, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, let me present uh, the uh, report and accomplishments so far of the Biodiversity Management Bureau, which is mandated to establish and manage protected areas as well as uh, manage coastal biodiversity and wetland ecosystems. Based on the uh, uh, created task force, uh, the Bureau was tasked to undertake rapid assessment of the affected areas and uh, explore mechanisms for the economic valuation of uh, the impacts. So basically, our team, uh, the teams led by the Biodiversity Management Bureau uh, Worked from uh, March 6 to March 10 uh, with counterparts from the DNR field offices uh, and the uh, provincial and local government units uh, in the region or impacted uh, municipalities uh, and communities. Uh, particularly as they employed the uh, aerial survey, ocular survey, shoreline walk, photo documentation, and interviews because of their limited capabilities to be on the site. Next slide, please. Basically, this slide would provide a uh, composite of uh, what the team has arrived at in terms of coming up with uh, the 58 uh, barangays covered in the assessment uh, in the nine municipalities uh, with uh, the degree of oiling uh, categorized as non, low, moderate, and high, as well as the uh, ecosystems that are uh, uh, potentially uh, affected or impacted such as corals, uh, seagrass, and mangroves, as well as the locally managed uh, municipal uh, uh, protect, uh, fishery protected areas and the uh, sightings of uh, turtles as well as nesting sites. Yes. Next, next slide. So basically we have this uh, assessment. So Basic, uh, what we have already confirmed as damage are 10 hectares of mangrove areas in Pola, in Barangay Kalima. But uh, in harm's way, in the uh, eight areas where oil spill uh, has been observed are the, those reflected in the table. So basically, over 2,000 hectares of corals, 1,000 hectares of seagrass, and uh, over 1,600 of mangroves. So there are also 25 out of the uh, 58 barangays where there are sightings, uh, reported sightings of uh, marine turtles, including uh, recorded uh, nesting. So that would provide for additional damage. Next slide, please. So from uh, the team's uh, observation, we came up with these recommendations for our DNR field office uh, for us to conduct a thorough assessment of the affected sites after period, a certain peri period, depending on the impacts. Economic valuation, which is ongoing uh, with experts uh, 
coming from their experience as mentioned by the Honorable Secretary in the Tuwataha Reef Incident and also capacitation on wildlife handling because we expect that some wildlife may be affected later on uh, if the oil spill would really uh, move further inwards and uh, perhaps the replacement areas of the nesting sites if already confirmed as well as updating of the coastal resources management uh, information in the affected municipalities. Next slide, please. Uh, we will include also a report on the uh, rapid assessment done in Region 6, uh, particularly in Antique, uh, over the same period. Basically, they, they also the region also employed interagency rapid teams composed of DNR personnel, uh, the PENRO and SENRO, uh, over four barangays which were visited. Next slide, please. And they, they reported this uh, uh, observation where uh, there was this oil spill impact, particularly in Simarara and Tinogbok, as well as in Liwagao uh, uh, Island. The total uh, habitat affected are uh, indicated uh, on, on the screen, uh, but uh, basically we were able to conduct only shoreline assessment. Uh, the other uh, ecosystems were unable to uh, be determined because of limited capability and considering that we have coral reefs and seagrasses to be determined as well. Next slide, please. So basically, uh, there is also this set of recommendations for the region concerned that of clean up to proceed, particularly with focus on the oil debris and solid waste uh, found along shorelines and mangrove areas, the collection of sur sur subsurface oil that penetrated already the sandy sediments, as well as rehabilitation that shall commence after the habitats uh, have shown signs, uh, after they have shown signs of recovery, because there is always this tendency for them to rebound from these uh, incidences. 35 hectares long ito. So I guess that that's all, Madam Secretary, as far as the BMB report uh, of assessment. Thank is you very Thank much, Asa Camaro. Just to conclude, uh, we have a summary of needs uh, moving forward, Madam Chair, with your indulgence. Just two more slides that will actually uh, indicate what we feel are the gaps so far in terms of what might be needed, of course, to be further validated with our LGU partners uh, and also ways forward and what we have received the way of offers for donations as well as uh, partners uh, from our foreign assistance. Um, next slide, please. So uh, just a table, oh, excuse me. Could we go back one slide? Just a table. We've classified, uh, of course, for further detailing with uh, our LGU partners, the needs of communities as we have, of course, uh, already observed livelihood support for fishing uh, tools, equipment, alternative livelihood, family food packs continuing po with the DSWD, and PPEs, which are continuously needed in order to remediate the sites. The needs for the cleanup, again, supplies and materials that are related to the cleanup itself. Callers and transporters, on-site treatment, TSD, po, Madam Chair, as you've pointed out, PPEs for our teams, and of course, the compensation for augmenting teams on the ground. Technical assistance, which we continue to have, po, uh, needs for air and water testing. We have laboratories that are running overtime and hoping to tap our local universities to also help us. Waste management and protocols for the cleanup of mangroves uh, and our assistance from our higher education institutions as well as our foreign partners for impact assessment, which are ongoing. Uh, next slide, please. Just so we are also accounting for the donations and assistance that have come uh, to us at the DNR, may we just cite the organizations of our uh, there on the list, including our foreign partners who have come from a very early stage, uh, the US, uh, Japan, France, and Republic of Korea have all indicated their willingness to support and private companies as listed po in, in the slide. Finally, our ways forward in closing. So as you can see, uh, Ma Ma Madam Chair, we have also plotted out our ways forward, which are continuing to evolve because we are assuming the worst uh, will actually happen, that we will not be able to plug this seepage. And therefore, uh, this is a rolling plan that will respond to the conditions on the ground as well as to the needs of our affected communities. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Secretary Loisaga and the DNR. We continue now with the question of Senator Risa. 
Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Um, and, and kay Secretary sa, sa buong uh, DNR family, um, I apologize, I have to leave for a 1.30 meeting, Madam Chair, pero kung pwede kong i-make of record na lang, I have a number of questions pa kasi sana, pero at least just the maybe four uh, most important, baka ang ating resource persons would care to respond to them uh, moving forward. Or, or kung may second hearing pa, Madam Chair, babalik na lang po ako. Uh, pero sana uh, isa pang tanong sa Marina, uh, uh, kung pwedeng malaman kung ano ang lagay ng fundong, binanggit na rin po kanina, I think ni Sen Tulfo, yung Oil Pollution Management Fund, magkano ito ngayon, although may narinig po akong parang 63 million kanina, at kung nakikipag-coordinate na ang marina sa Coast Guard para sa particular na incidenting ito. And then, uh, follow-up questions for Harbor Star Shipping Services and Malayan Towage and Salvage Corporation. Uh, kung kung pwedeng malaman exactly kailan sila nagsimula uh, magtrabaho dun sa Mindoro oil spill. Anong specific services ang pinoprovide nila? Gano'n nang ka-advance sila sa kanilang trabaho? And as experts sa kanilang assessment, gano'ng katagal para makumpleto yung trabaho nila? Um, secondly, for Harbor Star, Madam Chair, for the record, um, namobilize na ba ng Harbor Star yung sinabi nila sa isang press briefing na kaagad daw, mag hire sila at magbabayad sa mga displaced fisher folk para tumulong sa cleanup operations. Kung nagsimula na sila, paano nila sisiguruhin na adequately protected itong mga kababayan nating mangingisda mula sa harmful effects ng uh, direct contact sa industrial grade uh, oil na ito. And last but not the least, Madam Chair, just for the record, uh, marami-rami ko pa sana mga tanong, um, May mga community efforts na rin po kasi na ginagawa ang mga grupo tulad ng Protect Verde Island Passage and I, I see Protect VIP here, Madam Chair, upang maprotektahan ang kalikasan na pinagkukuhanan ng kabuhayan. Makikita natin sa mga news reports na gamit ang mga ordinaryong bagay tulad ng mga coconut husks. Kanina po may nanote ako dun sa presentation ng Coast Guard. Uh, hindi ko na mahanap sa notes ko. May binanggit po silang indigenous booms, may binanggit po silang coconut, may binanggit po silang hay. So meron na pong nangunguna tayong mga uh, grupo ng mga kababayan tulad ng Protect Verde Island Passage. Uh, so tulad ng mga coconut husks, tinali-tali para pigilin yung langis na lalong maka maka uh, kalat. So uh, paano yung mga plano ng iba't ibang stakeholders na nandito Madam Chair makakasuporta, makaka-scale up, makaka-complement uh, sa mga efforts na ito. So ayan, ito na si ating Senate President Pro Tem. So maraming salamat Madam Chair at sa lahat ng resource persons at uh, lalong-lalo na rin sa ating mga pinuno mula sa Mindoro Oriental na tama po si Gov sila yung pinaka dapat pakinggan at gov nakikinig po naririnig po kayo ng aming komite sa pamumuno ni chair at sana po moving forward but quickly moving forward ma madinig din po ang protect VIP at yung iba pa pong groups on the ground na gusto makipag-ugnayan din po sa DNR at ibang ahensya para ma-protectionan din ang Verde Island Passage salamat po madam chair uh, thank you very much, Senator Risa. We will uh, uh, get your questions and we will ask the pertinent parties to answer and we will give you the answer. We now recognize Senator Lauren Regarda. Um, thank you very much, Madam Chair. We appreciate the presence of all the government agencies. We appreciate the presence of our affected lo local government units um, led by um, Governor Dolor. And, um, I would just like to ask a basic question, which in the past five hours, I believe has not been answered. Who is coordinating the work of the different agencies to put a stop to the oil spill? Is it Marina? Is it Coast Guard? Is it the Philippine Navy? Is it the DNR? Is it the vessel? Is it the private sector? And this is just with regards to the oil spill or the leak. I saw the comprehensive report of the DNR MS, UPMSI, and they are mentioning about the worst case scenario in case the 800,000 liters is not contained. So 
we have the way forward. Obviously, we did not anticipate this in Agaa, so all the recommendations, while it looks good, and thank you for that, is not provided. But I will amend that by saying, yes, it could. it's not provided, but it could be provided because there is such a thing as the local DRRM funds, which I'm sure Governor Delor knows much about, and my colleagues, which is 5% of the ERA, Internal Revenue Allotment, and the other revenues of every LGU. 30% of that 5% can be used for quick response fund, and 70% of that 5% can be used for preparedness and or response and rehabilitation. Having said that, I believe, ako nang uuna sayo, hindi po yan sapat. Ano ba naman yung ERA ng Oriental Mindoro at yung halos sampo na LGU. Ang ira ng aming probinsya sakop ang ilang barangay, ang ilang sitio sa barangay sa Mirara at yung isang isla ay maaring hindi rin sapat. Having said that, there's 17 billion uh, allotted in different government agencies, namely DA, DepEd, DPWH, 11 billion, DSWD, which the agencies have been utilizing in giving their own individual agencies response by going to the area. And I thank um, Secretary Rex Gatalian that uh, he provided immediately for Samirara uh, through my office and my brother, Congressman A.A. A. Legarda. So I'm grateful for that. I'm sure Sec. Rex, uh, upon uh, knowing of the spill, texted me about it, and he was in Mindoro at the time. So we're grateful for that and the other agencies as well. But aside from the 17 billion, which is allotted uh, to the different agencies, it's 20.5 billion lodged under the End Dream Law. And I know that because when we were chair of finance, we used to allocate that. That is under it, with the DBM, but it's an End Dream Fund which should replenish the local uh, L Dream Fund, 30% of which is the QRF. So all of these, Madam Chair, are funds available in the national government and the local government. Having premised my query on that, I asked our colleagues in government in the executive department, sino po ang overall in charge base sa ating kaalaman, base sa batas, na siyang nagkukumpas. DNR, gawa mo yan. Si DNR, alam ko ba ang kinukumpasan ni Sek. Loisaga, BMB, EMB. O, oh, DOH, oh, meron may nausea, meron may vomiting, meron may LBM. Sino nagkukumpas? Uh, marina, oh, may mga angal sa marina. O Coast Guard, under DOTR, etc. So who among the government agencies present here, or maybe hindi na ipatawag, para ipatawag mo namin sa susunod, ang siyang namumuno ng lahat na to. Kung nasagot na po ito earlier at maliwanag na sa ating kaisipan kung sinong in charge, siya po ang tatanungin ko. Pero mukhang wala. Kasi nung nagsalita si Governor Dolor kanina, ay para silang Hilo rin at hindi alam, although we are grateful, and he is grateful, that individual agencies and the cabinet members and or representatives have helped Mindoro and Antique. So back to my question, and anyone may answer, uh, especially N Dream Head, who is our N Dream Head? Where is he? The N Dream Head is SND. Okay, but he left. Uh, who is the substitute who will answer for end dream uh, ASEC. ah we have the deputy administrator anyway so um we will leave it at that i just want to know from the agencies present uh sino po, who is coordinating all the efforts or if there is no head yet i would suggest um, with the cooperation and support of my colleagues that there should be a head agency hindi pwedeng Piecemeal, pag hindi humingi ang LGU at hindi umiyak sa inyo, pupunta ang mga ahensya, tutulong, pupunta mga senador, mga congressman, etc. Tutulong. Uh, oh, the, who is that? Uh, he's, he's raising his hand, the one from the Philippine Coast Guard. 
Sige, um, thank you very much, ma'am. Um, yes. Thank you for that question and for recognizing. Can you face your name? Kasi po, malayo. Sorry. Yes. Vice Admiral Punzo lang po. It's okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you po for, again, thank you. Vice Admiral Punzo lang po, ma'am. Well, uh, baka po makatulong, this may be helpful, that on ground, on the incident command post, we have a the, our unified incident command post. This is headed by a commander, a very a, a senior officer in the person of Commodore Tuvilla. So sa cleanup operations po natin, uh, ito po yung, yung ginagampanan pong uh, role ng Philippine Coast Guard, but I hope it can help as regards the cleanup operations. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Sinasabi po ninyo, thank you, sir, uh, kayo po bilang Coast Guard ang in charge on the ground. When you say on the ground, sa clean up. Uh, when we say clean up, clean up that the damage has been done. It should be containment and then clean up. But this is just one part of the whole problem. It should also be immediate assessment. But then pag assessment, it means the harm has been done. And then there's a social economic aspect. So, sino po sa inyong lahat? na mga ahensya nandito or baka wala dito yung tao na in charge. There should, there should be one commander. I mean, you know what I mean, yeah? It, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I went to military school. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. Hindi pwedeng, hindi pwedeng uh, marami, pero walang nag, nagtitimon. Mm -hmm. And that is why I understand the confusion and the frustration of Governor Dolor. Naghanap po siya ng ulo na kung sino pong in charge sa lahat po ng magigiting na kasamahan sa gobyerno. At yun ang po ang gusto kong tanungin. Um, let me mean. just ask um, uh, Coast Guard, Ad Vice Admiral Ponsalan, sino po ang nagtalaga sa inyo or para po maintindihan naming lawmakers, anong batas ang nagsabi na ang Coast Guard po ang in charge sa lahat po ng assessment, containment, clean up of whether it's a Oil spill, aquatic pollution, ano ba ho? Or you took it upon yourself, even if you're all confused, then thank you, sir. Mm -mm. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I stand corrected. Hindi po lang clean up uh, in as much as I am. That is what we're doing right now, really, aggressively. But including containment, ma'am, and um, retrieval. So, tama po kayo when you said so. Ngayon po, ang basis po for the Coast Guard to be the commander of the Unified um, Incident Command Post for these uh, operations that we, I just enumerated is um, cited in Section 3 of Republic Act 9993 or the Philippine Coast Guard Law. Um, in layman's term, eh, ito po yung protection of the marine environment in that respect. Kaya po may national oil... Operation Center for Oil Pollution. But as regards the other aspects, which was very clearly discussed, um, I, I, I can no longer um, give a comment for that. So clearly, you are in charge, and sabi nyo may unified command, pero limitado rin po. But uh, in your, uh, to your knowledge and your awareness, ay wala pong overall in charge. Iba pa yung mandate pa ng DNR, iba pa mandate. So, uh, who can enlighten me? Uh, we cannot have uh, different agencies while well-meaning, well-funded with the resources. It's just the start of the year. We have the resources, and I mentioned the source of funds aside from the individual agencies, QRF, na walang in charge. Pag hindi ba humingi ang gobernor, ang mga mayor, at gumalaw ang mga senador, at congressman, hindi? Hindi, may kusa naman kayo, at alam namin yan, pero dapat ay meron tayong roadmap, di ba? Alam natin. So, hindi po natin alam kung sino in charge. I saw Secretary Luisaga raise her hand. May I know, um, are you taking the lead, uh, Secretary Tony, to lead all these agencies of government for a coherent, comprehensive response to reduce disaster risk, to mitigate the impact and contain the oil leak and the oil spill and to address the socio-economic impact on the livelihoods of our poor fisher folks and communities. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, if I may go back to our presentation, 
Our slide number one actually illustrates the agency mandates according to the National Oil Spill Contingency Plan. Uh, and in that in that table, you will see for there the division of labor, so to speak, on the different agencies and what they are supposed to do, depending on the escalation of this disaster. So it's very clearly spelled out po in this document and has basis in law. Uh, and so, uh, but we know the division of law and we saw the presentation, but yes, who is in charge? Who's the battalion commander? Who is the commander? Who, who's who's Mandy, the Mandy, Mandy. May I may I know? Uh, I saw your presentation. You're just one agency who will also coordinate, let's say, uh, for all the food packs that's uh, covered by Rex in the easy tone. I mean, you're doing what you can. Uh, Coast Guard is doing what they can. But who is coordinating with all of you? Uh, should it not be? Should it not be end dream? It should be the end dream. Uh, actually, I asked a question, which I know the answer. I was hoping you would answer me that. It's a 2010 Endrim law. Endrim. That's why who in Endrim is in charge? Secretary Galvez was here earlier. I know he had to leave. Sino sa Endrim ang in charge? So maybe we're wrong, but uh, each agency has its mandate. We heard it. But who's in charge totally? Na tahi tahi lahat ito. No one can answer. Mr. Chair, yes. Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, if I may, ma'am, if I may uh, enlighten. Yes, I'm, I'm from a to be a ma'am. I'm the newly designated uh, incident commander. Uh, good morning to everyone. Right now, ma'am, on the ground, I'm uh, the one liaisoning with all the um, stakeholders and concerned agencies pertaining to our operation. And among the members of my Unified Incident Command, of the province of Oriental Mindoro. That is the reason why all these things that uh, are moving around in uh, Oriental Mindoro, like the entry of even the entry of the uh, strike team, you know, goes under our command so that we could accompany them and designate them to areas that uh, we need uh, the assessment. So, with regards to the, the food packs like that uh, that are coming in. Uh, in our underground, ma'am, the PDM, I, I designate or um, give instructions to the members because I unified the ma'am eh, and give them the direction. Po. Yes, very clear. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commodore. I will answer my own question, and this is for the enlightenment of all agencies. While it is an old law, we must be, it is defined in the law so clearly, and we must act as one, so to speak, based on this 2010 law. In Section 15 of the Endrim C Law, Republic Act 10121, coordination during emergency, and clearly this is an emergency, the local Dream C, in this case, the provincial DRR officers, in our case, Antique, in your case, Mindoro, shall take the lead in preparing for and responding to and recovering from the effects of any disaster but of course, these are provincial, local L dreams, and they all will meet towards the national dream C. That is why Congress, the Senate, put the 20 billion under the national end dream, and the local also have their own local DRR funds, and every agency, including uh, DNR, has part of the 17 billion. So the answer to my question, sirs, are, is the end dream. Kaya wala ngayon si Secretary Galvez, ang siya ng umaga, sino po ang sasagot sa akin na nagre-represent po ng end dream? Kasi may secretariat yan. You're a coordinating council. You should coordinate with DNR, with DOH, with the SWD, with the APFAR, how many fishing boats are needed, with the PWH, o oh, nasira yung seawall, o oh, ganito na tumihan, walang daungan ng mga uh, mangingisda, uh, DILG, uh, ano ang kailangan, di ba? Ganun po. So, Endrim. Nung panahon namin nun, ang Endrim, di ba, may OCD secretariat, at may executive director. I am not certain how the setup is now. May I know, sir, is the OCD here 
uh, which then was the secretariat of the Endream present here. And can you answer these questions? And are you, Endream National, performing the task of coordinating with all these men and women as well as the local governments? We have, we have here ASEC uh, Alejandro to answer. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, bakit po yung deputy? Sino po yung administrator? The deputy. Si Secretary Galvez ang administrator. Kayo no, ang deputy? No. The administrator is Yusek uh, Nipomuseno, ma'am. Uh, the administrator, the end dream, the chair of the end dream is the SND. The chair, ma'am, is the SND. Yes, I yeah. know. That's our law. The executive so director the, is... Uh, the head is the administrator. Is the executive director of the Yes. Council. Where is the executive director, sir? Because he should be the executive director of End Dream, based on what I said, is supposed to talk to you this way. February 28, it happened. At midnight, you should be talking this way. Tapos nag-uutos, nag-uusap, anong assessment? Then all the reports of every agency that we've uh, been... I said, for the past where is your administrator? Red, is I thought uh, it's Secretary Galvez. He's the chair. The he's chair. Oh, is the chair. Where is your administrator? Nasa, nasa Agnaldo po ma, meron siyang uh, important meeting. Does he know that there's an oil spill? Yes ma. Is he in charge? Has he met with all of you present in this committee hearing? Yes ma'am. Uh, he has met the governor himself uh, yes. last week. Okay, can you we speak with We have been coordinating ma'am uh, okay. regarding this one. Sing but uh, because we have a contingency plan that uh, we follow, uh, which designates the Coast Guard as the lead when it comes to the oil spill response, so our role, uh, basically, ma'am, right now is to provide augmentation to the, to the Coast Guard and to DNR uh, when it comes to uh, coming up with uh, support. But if eh, sinabi po, ma'am, na hindi na kaya ng uh, Pinchal, then our regional uh, Dream Sea is there to support. In fact, we have activated Sorry. our Dream Sea already. They said that you are the secretariat, yes, not the one in charge. Yes, ma'am. The secretariat coordinating. Yes. Kailangan ng coordinate sa lahat ng ahensya at hindi mararamdaman uh, ng LGU na parang ulila sila na walang I think uh, 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 Senator Lauren, maybe we should ask the President to assign the head. Maybe. Yes, yeah. that's why we're asking. Kasi ito ay secretariat yes. lang secretariat. to eh. Oo, oh, oh, hindi ito ang head eh. Huh? Oh. That's why, uh, yes, yes, I was going to that. I was going to make a recommendation. I'm glad that the chair mentioned that. Uh, sana, segundahan mo na yung aking motion, Madam Chair. Uh, seeing the absence of a clear head of this monstrosity, of this emergency, of this... It's not just an oil spill, it's an aquatic uh, pollution, it's an ocean spill, because it's not just, it's the 800 liters and not yet there. So this will be continuing, not for weeks, not for months, for years, recalling Guimaras. And I know that this has been said to be worse than Guimaras. So uh, we look for secretariat head, but how come secretariat head coordinate all this. Um, ang tanong ko po, mula February 28, lahat po na nakalap na impormasyon ngayong araw na ito, nag-meeting ba ho and Dream C face-to-face or Zoom, ilang beses na po kasama ba ho ang mga lokal na pamahalaan ng antike hanggang sa head ng barangay at mga head ng purok at sitio, pati na rin po ang mga mayor at governor at mga barangay captain ng affected towns. At two weeks, may needs assessment by the time na kalat na baho ng Endrim C to OCD Secretariat ang needs assessment at naibigay na ba sa mga ahensya ng gobyerno para po magawa. So, maliwanag iba yung containment at cleanup yung socio-economic at health needs po ng tao. ASEC, I'm sorry to yes. have to put you through this. Kayo po ang nandito humaharap. Ano po ang sagot? Yes, ma'am. We have been meeting uh, on this uh, since day one. In fact, uh, through VTC, we have met uh, the Coast Guard, the DNR, and other agencies. 
And uh, personally, nakapunta na rin kami sa Mindoro. And we have designated our regional director there as our task force head to support the effort. And uh, we have uh, reports, ma'am. We have consolidated everything. In fact, uh, based on our updates this morning, we have... Uh, uh, consolidated the cost of assistance that uh, every agency has provided and uh, we are continue doing continuously doing that in fact we have placed on red alert status our operation center specifically to cater to the needs of this uh, emergency po. can you give us that report yeah. yeah the costings of the different agencies uh, which contributed to the Oil spill. I'm happy. glad you mentioned that. Happy. Yeah, uh, kindly provide yeah, the committee. Magkano na po ang total na assistance na nabigay po lahat ng ahensya ng gobyerno sa nakaraang dalawang linggo? February 28, February, so um, to, that's March 13, date, so 14. Uh, yes, ma'am. To date, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair, uh, Madam uh, Senator, it's already placed at uh, 20.5 million pesos, 18.8 million of which came from uh, DSWD, and then uh, from OCB, 281,000, and then from LGUs. Uh, also, based on our uh, coordination with DSWD, they have on standby 745 million pesos uh, standby funds, and for OCD, we have uh, around 466,000 oh, million pesos. Okay. On standby. Let me state. 1.2 billion, um, 400 plus 700. 1.2 billion, or did I hear 25 million? Yung uh, standby fund. 700. Uh, it's uh, 20. 25 million. Tw close to 20.5 million pesos. 20, 20 million pa lang po. Yes. Okay. Po. That excludes the food for uh, work. Yes. Uh, po. 20 million. Dalawang probinsya. Actually, more. Tatlong probinsya, dalawang rehiyon. They have a standby fund. Uh, sinabi din sa akin niya ni Secretary Galvez sa OCD na 400 plus million. Tapos sabi niya meron sa 700 plus million ng DSWD. Yes. Uh, paalala ko po, uh, meron po kayong 17 billion lodged in various agencies, uh, including DNR, DOH, uh, DepEd, DPWH, etc. Tingnan po nyo yung allocation. I can give it to you here. It's in the GAA. And you have 20 billion under the NDREAMC. And make sure that that is also utilized, although that is for the whole year, for the whole country. But this is an emergency that will affect the libraries. I don't think 20 million pesos ay mararamdaman po ng lahat ng apektado po dito. Pero babalik po ako sa katanungan ko. I don't ko. think that's a, uh, complete. Kasi the, I'm sure yung, ano, yung DNR, malaki na rin na nagasta niya. Wala namang nakalagay doon. Eh. Kaya I, I think don't, that's understated. So, I don't think it's 20 million. Uh, I don't think it's 20 million. No, ma'am. What I'm asking is, a cost, you said you had the cost estimate, so I was happy you had it. Uh, in cleanup, in assessment, in livelihood, in in uh, health, in in food parks, in uh, fishing boats, in supplemental livelihoods, comprehensible. Kaya nga kailangan merong head na comprehensible prevention and containment and leading to the least the least leak na kaya sana at the same time yung tumutungon tungon uh, the one um taking care of the livelihood of our people. I don't think, sir, with all due respect, the 20 million is the total cost. Yeah. And which brings me back to the Endrim C law because it says, and I will read the portion of our law, the Endrim C should be in charge when there are two or more regions affected. In this case, clearly, it's Mimaropa and Region 6. So, kailangan, February 28th, Nangyari yan, trigger, MDMC, meeting lahat. Kung di pa nagpatawag ng meeting ang Senado, buusap-usap ba kayong lahat? Uh, I'm very candid here, Madam Chair. It's been our comment often as senators that nakikita-kita lang ang mga ahensya ng gobyerno, hindi ko pulod niya lahat, pag nasa committee hearing o nasa budget hearing o pag may mga investigasyon gaya nito. Parang bang kayo, you exist in isolation. So, dapat nag-uusap-usap. 
This provision of MDREAM law of 2010 should have been triggered on February 28 when this spill happened because every LGU has a local DRR officer. Every prov they report to the province. And it, instead of cascading, goes up to the provincial and to the national MDREAM. Hindi po nyo kasalanan, ASEC, uh, kayo po ay deputy administrator. The administrator should have been here and the end dream dapat may daily, meron uh, daily reports. So, all these agencies, okay, iisa-isahin ko, si Coast Guard, si Dolpe, si Marina, si Namria, okay, under ka kay DNR, si DOH, si DSWD, si lahat ng binanggit natin ay nag-uusap ba ng madalas uh, para tunghayan yung pangangailangan ng nauhan, ng pola, ng semirara, uh, maaaring ginagawa, pasundot-sundot, pero yung talagang komprensibong converge, parang hindi po. So, Madam Chair, uh, may I propose that the President uh, designate among Agencies, hindi tayo maglalagay ng bagong tao, ibibis pa. Uh, as a head, there should be a head na nagkukumpas. Kung ang orkestra, meron ba to na nag, may, para maayos ang musika? Kung ang Senate Pres Senado, may Senate President, may leadership, kung ang Kongreso, lahat kailangan mili. Kung batalyon, may leader, may commander. Di ba po? Kailangan may ulo. Uh, Lauren, we will write the President that uh, to assign ahead for this uh, operation oil spill it's my humble suggestion uh, i'm glad the chair agrees um okay having said that uh may i know so two things i want to know first the prevention containment of the spill that was described by dnr based on the upmsi who is responsible for doing that it's been answered earlier. I just want you to restate it before the end of the hearing. How much will it cost? And how much of the damage will be mitigated if that cost is given to you? And do we have the technology, the know-how, the skills, and the warm bodies, the people to do it? That is containing the spill. I will go, my, I will tell you my next question. Prospectively, all the livelihoods affected in the three provinces thus far and the other provinces that will be affected if the spill and the worst case scenario is not uh if it happens uh who how much will it cost and what is being done about that so the scientific answer on the technology and the human resources needed to contain the spill and the human resources and the financial resources needed to provide livelihoods to the people who will answer because there is no head we will not be able to answer i am certain yeah. perhaps that the agencies can answer thank you uh but, yeah thank you very much maraming salamat po madam chair um senator legarda ma'am ang um, ang aking pong sagot na maibibigay po uh it is part of the mandate of the coast guard to undertake containment abatement and mitigation of uh, oil at sea. So kung kaya, I will further describe na tatlong layer po siya. We have offshore, which is um, uh, nautical miles away from shore. Then we have near the shoreline. And then finally, shoreline. How much? Nga? How much? Uh, how much po ang kailangan? Ma'am, wala ko exact figure, pero may I just describe it in the form of factors? The, kasi we use bo boats when we go off. So, so you have seven idea, Iho. Ma'am. Seven idea. Of how much oh, profile, ma'am. How much it will cost. So we will have an idea of uh, if our money is enough, our budget is enough for that. Just an idea. It 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 can estimate lang. Just a rough idea of how much it will cost. Tingin ko yung kanilang ano yung economic will depend on how long you will have this Apo. spill eh. O kasi yung pag-support sa sa mga 
fishermen and the people will depend on how long this will take. So we must uh -huh. have an idea on of how long it, this will take and how much it will cost. So we will have an idea of uh -huh. how, how long we will support the people affected by this. Uh -huh. Ma'am, if I may continue, as, uh, our companions is finding out a very close estimate to the amount. Yung... Sorry, Loisaga, how long do you think this will take to control this? Ma'am, it will really depend on, number one, how we can... The worst, the worst. In terms of ecosystem damage, ma'am, because we do not see what is not on the surface at this time. Mm -hmm. So, we no, do but this, the, the spill, how long will we contain the spill? Yung ecosystem damage years yan eh, kasi ibabalik mo lahat yes, yung mga na damage. But the, how much, uh, how long will we support the people of, of the, Neg, uh, Mindoro Oriental and Antique and Palawan, those affected. So we will have an idea. Ma'am, the last uh, estimates that we also reported to the President uh, from UPMSI, and this was as late as Friday, po, last Friday, the spillage is taking place at about 35,000 to 50,000 liters per day. Their calculation then was that it would take about 15 to 20 days to actually empty the vessel. If the assumptions are are correct, po, and until we see the actual vessel, po, um, we cannot say that this is. But this is the estimated scenario, po. So fifteen to yes, fifteen to twenty days, po, to actually empty the vessel. How it will reach for the different municipalities depends, po, on the winds and the current. So we will have to rely on the model that they are actually running. And again, ma'am, that is only from the surface that we can see. Ang, ang transport hunyan for the heavy, we cannot see from, from the top. So, kailangan po constant monitoring. The and this is the problem, ma'am. Um, while there is sa sea, yun ma'am fish ay affected. Kaya ma'am nag-request ma'am ako sa BIFAR of a regular testing ng toxicity level ng fish. Uh -huh. Dahil ma'am, ngayong oras na to, ang dami ma'am isdang namamatay. We have the BIFAR here eh. Where's The BIFAR. Pero wala pa pong result. Nandyan ba? Hindi ba nandyan ang BIFAR? Where's the BIFAR? O gano'ng katagal mo yung mga fishes will be affected kung one month magtatagal yung spill? Uh, good afternoon po. Uh, as far as the Sampling is concerned po, uh, nandun na po siya sa FNRI, ni-refer po namin yung uh, samples din po niyan, ma'am, for the... Tinatanong kita, halimbawa, one month yung spill, o gaano katagal mawawala ng trabaho yung mga fishermen na hindi makakapunta doon sa dagat because of the spill? Para yes. alam natin kung gaano natin susuportahan yung mga fishermen. Uh, as for the livelihood, ma'am, we are thinking of providing yung post-harvest. Perhaps we can source out our raw materials from Occidental Mindoro. Oh. For raw materials sa ating post-harvest. So, gagamit yung ano, coast ng Oriental Mindoro for yeah. how long? Yung... Kung ganyan ang spill. Gan gaano katagal? Kasi nga po, uh, we have to verify po, based on sa result. Kasi right now, ma'am, sensory lang po, ma'am, eh. Oo. Oh, Kaya kailangan po, ma'am. Just an idea kung how long, based on experience. Uh, I'm not a competent person for that, ma'am. I have to refer that to our uh, laboratory uh, people po. Can you give a report on yes, that? Yes, Ano yung kahaba-haba mong report na binigay sa akin? Tapos hindi mo masabi sa akin kung gaano katagal. Uh, it's not uh, initiatives lang po yun, ma'am, for Region uh, 6 as well as yung Mimaropa Region po. May uh, kahaba-haba kang report dito tapos sasabihin mo you have to consult. Diba ito? Ilang pages to? Haba-haba. Oh, Since uh, Feb 28 po yan, ma'am, na uh, incident. Pero I just want to have an idea na pag nag-oil spill ng one month, gano'ng katagal hindi maku magagamit yung, hindi makaka-fish yung mga fishermen sa dagat na yon. Short, we're anticipating the yeah. damage yeah. and the effect so, on livelihood. Oh, yes. Before I cannot answer that, can any government agency answer that? 
Pag hindi na-answer ng before tungkol sa fish, I don't think a coast guard. Alam mo ba? O ikaw? Alam mo ba? Um, uh, ma Madam Chair? Oh. I may just, uh, you just wish to answer quickly the question a while ago. How oh. much oh, we you use? You have not answered oh. my question totally or is it finished? And then the answer the question of the chair. Oh. And then, ano, you, ano ang ma-answer mo? Uh, 2.5 uh, to 3 million a day, ma'am. Clean. To, to operate our equipment. To respond uh, to the oh. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. Oh, pero one month, eh, di ba? So, kung 3 million a day, 30, 100 million, di ba? Um, Something is, like that, di ba? This is to operate that equipment. Your question was livelihood. Yun nga, eh, hindi niya nga masagot. Hindi mo ba kayang sagutin yun? Coast Guard? Kung halimbawa, eh, ano? Hindi niya alam Okay. So, uh, what we need to know is... Uh, Remember, I asked you about the cleanup. Who is in charge? Kayo? Do you have the technology, the know-how? How long will it take? How do you prevent uh, all the oil from spilling, the 800 liters? Are we able to do that? Do we have the know-how and the technology? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much. I'll answer by saying, first, we have bottoms. We have ships. We have booms. And this is... Um, uh, this is unified. This is uh, collective. So we get science-based uh, science-based information from DNR, and, and then, then um, uh, we have the oil spiller who coordinates. Likewise, uh, just a while ago they mentioned that they they coordinated for an ROV uh, with um, this the PV dynamic positioning vessel, so that we can take a look at the vessel da down beneath so that we can know how to crimp or to prevent more oil to come up. That is what the Coast Guard has, ma'am. The technology, the know-how to prevent further oil from spilling. Yes. Uh, oh, the or to contain, coming. abate, and mitigate, ma'am, the effect of oil. Yes, we do. Yes, ma'am. You have it? Yes, ma'am. Booms, personnel, um, with training and uh, boats. So are you doing it now? Yes, are you containing the spill? Has it been contained? Um, every time the seas become calm, yes. our boats are deployed right away with booms. And then they skim it out, collect and recover the oil. Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Uh, can, can I interject? Let's be very frank in this hearing, Madam Chair. Kung natin itago ang totoo, ang totoo, ma'am, the problem is becoming huge, bigger and bigger every day. Bakit po? Tinatago kasi natin yung problema eh. Hindi nga, ma'am, itinatago kasi, mag-usap tayo. Sabi nyo, meron kayong spill booms. Pero tingnan nyo ba, kinakailangan gumawa uh, Vice Admiral ng mga tao ng temporary spill booms? Kasi do not have enough. Ang spill boom po ninyo ay 250 meters na nandun sa gitna ng dagat. We have 55 kilometers. If we have 55 kilometers of coastline na may problema, and you have only 250-300 meters of spill boom, how can we prevent the spill? Saan ang sinasabi natin dito na yung oras na ito may problema? Dahan-dahan natin, Madam Chair, with your permission. Kaya po ito nag nagiging magulo. Tama po ang inyong dinadrive na point, uh, Senator Loren. Kailangan may nagdidirehe. First day, wala talaga nagdidirehe. Wala po talaga. Ang totoo, ang nag-request pa po sa akin ng meeting between Coast Guard and DNR, yung director ng, Coast, ng DNR at si Secretary Loisaga. Pinagsama ko po yan. I presided over the first PDRRMC meeting, pagtalubog na pagtalubog ng barko. At that time, Last Friday, we do not know who is in charge. That's why the provincial government charge. Ma'am, lahat ng cabinet secretary sa aming pumupunta, the PDRRMC is well placed the whole week, the whole, the whole 12 days. Kaya ma'am, nag-request ako kay Secretary Loisag at kay Secretary Jaime Galvez at kay Admiral Abu, give us somebody who will be my partner kasi hindi ito trabaho ng local government. Ang sabi ninyo sa rule, di ba uh, Vice Admiral, meron, meron tayong sinusunod na contingency plan. Sa contingency plan, ang in-charge, sabi nyo, pag spill Coast Guard. So lahat ng agency nag-back off. Kasi sabi, Coast Guard ang in-charge. Sabi ko, Coast Guard, pero who is in-charge? Who is in-charge? 
In people, you're in charge. But in everything that's happening, who is in charge? Wala. I requested Ad, uh, Admiral Abbott to send me somebody from Coast Guard who will take charge. I'm happy you sent uh, Commodore Tobilla. He is now the one in charge. But it is only the containment in up. But this is a multifaceted effort. Mam, merong relief. Merong recovery. May damage control. May computation. So will now be the one in charge. Ma'am, alam nyo, nag-initiative na po ang provincial government. Ang provincial government, nagawa na po ng sarili namin recovery program because we do not know. Where are we going to? Sa recovery program, kasama po dito, yung mga ahensa ng gobyerno na tutulong sa amin, paano mabibigyan. Kaya lang po, the, in the involved agencies here are national government agencies. I'm happy that Secretary Galvez kanina assured me, this time I'll be the one. With that assurance of Secretary Galvez that he's going to take charge, doon pa lang po ako nagkaroon ng... ng Sana. Sana, sana, madam. So actually, uh, thank you for, for saying that. You're reiterating, sinesegundahan mo yung tanong ko, who is in charge? At saka, tama si Governor Dolor. Huwag po natin lilinlangin or tatakan ang problema para mabigyan ng permanenting solusyon. Huwag natin sasabihin, kaya natin, itong mandato natin, abatement, mitigation, uh, at kaya namin, may mga boom kami. Kung, sabi, kung kulang, sabihin nyo. Kung may uh, costing, sabihin po nyo. At susubukan natin gawin. Uh, natutuwa ako sa positibo nyong attitude sa buhay. Kaya namin to, kaya namin. Pero sabihin nyo, kung may kakulangan, siguro ado, kung may kulang, sabihin po ninyo. Um, Secretary, so hindi pa po nasasagot yung aking katanungan. I think yung katanungan po ng Chair. Uh, kung ano po ang kailangan sa kabuhayan ng mga apektadong libo-libong mangingisda at ibang komunidad sa tatlong probinsya para po maplano natin mula sa pondong na riyan naman sa gobyerno ang pagbibigay ng kanilang kabuhayan. Nakapending yung question ko, isagot po pagkatapos ng sagot ni Secretary Loisaga. Thank you. Madam Chair, uh, Senator Loren po, just to, uh, to give some reference po in terms of the past experience, I will turn over to Undersecretary Malu Ernie, who was the task team leader during the Gimaras oil spill. And so we have the data from, from Undersecretary Ernie about the recovery and the pace at which the containment happened during Gimaras. Uh, Yusek Ernie, please. Madam Chair, um, Senator Ligarda and others, no? good afternoon. So. In Gimaras, I was then the general manager of Petron Foundation, and I was asked by Nick Alcantara, Chairman Nick Alcantara, to be the incident commander. I stayed four months on field, on site. And for the remotely operated vehicle, it took them three days to be able to complete the work of the ROV. After that, uh, the Oil recovery operation, ma'am, was completed in 21 days. And then after that, uh, we had a lot of livelihood uh, op program opportunities. And then Secretary, DNR Secretary Alcala uh, announced that after five months, uh, Alcala po, si Dr. Alcala announced that um, the waters are already um, um, Fishing can already be done after five months, ma'am. Five months. Five months, yes. So three days of ROB, 21 days of oil recovery operations, and then after five months, pwede na pong magfish. Thank you. So that was Gimaras, and uh, it's been projected that this could be worse than Gimaras. Actually, in uh, Gimaras, uh, it was uh, we it was uh, two point one million liters, no. And uh, in is, terms it, it, of it, the it, location it, it, of the vessel, okay, uh, six hundred thirty nine meters deeper and deeper. bigger. Deep. So yeah. this is like one half. Yes. Yeah, one th one half eight hundred thousand. But we don't know the effects. Uh, we don't know. It could be less in liters, but the effects depending on. The marine ecosystem affected depend puyan. Madam Chair, yes, in, mm -hmm. indeed. So we're looking at biodiversity values and the relationship between biodiversity and the livelihoods of people at as well as their mas, health. Mas konti yung taong apektado ron ito nakatatlong probinsya na. Oo, diba? 
Oh, so uh, hindi sa litro lang ng oil kung hindi na rin sa dami ng populasyon sa affected areas at sa uri ng marine ecosystem sa mga lugar na yun. Yes. At sa livelihood ng mga tao kung marami mga resort, turismo, yung mga trabaho doon at kung kumpul-kumpul ang komunidad na alam kong ganun kumpul-kumpul ang madami. Uh -uh. Yes. For Lauren, we will just uh, estimate the number of people to be supported. And then we will assume a, 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 a length of time. And then we'll m multiply yung sweldo nila every day for that length of time bago sila makabalik dun sa... Uh, bago sila makabalik sa dagat. Di assume natin six months. O sabi nila 20,000, di ba? Ilan ba? 20,000? Uh, nakalagay doon 380 ba a day ang sweldo? Madam Chair. wage? Maka yes? Um, Tanong ko lang po, kasi as affected area sa Oriental Mindoro, um, kasi hindi ko po naririnig, hanggang kaya lang po yung barko doon, and ano yung plano po doon sa barko, kasi uh, iba na po ang nakikita ko po naririnig ko, is yung paano patahilin yung oil. Ang tanong ko po, ay hanggang kaya lang po yung barko doon sa lugar namin. Bakit tanggalin ang barko? Kahit yung oil po, hanggang kaya lang po. Ay, yung oil, ang oil po. kaya nila one month eh. Wow. One month, month daw eh. Yun ang wow. estimate nila. Di ba sa 20 days? O di one, so one month, month every day po kami maglilinis ang shoreline? One month. Kasi kung one month po, every day po kami maglilinis ang shoreline namin. Every day. Sa inyo na 21 days. Kung one, ano? Oh, eh. That's ano. Oh, yeah. Should have an idea. So kung matata mapipigil nila yung oil for one month, then it will take, sabi nila, six months para magamit yung ano. You just have to support the, the yes. people for six months. Nasala rin nila, di ba? Hindi na lang kaya yun. Natin kung magkano ang, ang ikes or uh, tupad that we will give, how long? Di ba? Madam you Chair? You have an estimate. Um, um, uh, Senator Villar, Chairman, I will answer it since no one is answering it. Per the report, there are 137,000 more or less persons in Mimaropa and Western Visayas. It times na natin minimum wage 400 per day. Family, you don't give salary to all the family. You just give a salary to the oh, family. So let's make it, let's make it 30,000 families. It's 30,000 families or 100 37,230 persons. So assuming, let's let's make it per person. Let's just, um, how, you can't give 400. No, but we can share, chair, if I may. You, but you should compute oh, 30,000. Let, let, I just want to see how much we need. Third, dapat sinasagot to na ahensya ng gobyerno eh. 30,000 families, 30,000 families times how much would you give per family? No, it cannot... 400, huh? 400 per family. Um, that's 12 million per day times 30 days. That's 360 million times six months. That's uh, 2.1 billion. Assuming it's six months because yes, Gimaras was ni, five months. Sabi ni Endrim at saka ni... Ni sino yung isa na may pera yung DSW do yung medo daw silang 1.2 billion eh, na standby eh, di ba? Oh. Yes. As I said, there's 17 billion lodged in different agencies and there's 20 billion uh, under National Endream and there's LGU but small uh, QRF funds. So Approximately, but I don't think mabubuhay naman tao sa 400. No, they days. said uh, there's an alternative. They go to the other side. Baka may hanap buhay din doon sa other side. Kasi itong na-damage, itong ano eh, oriental, meron daw anong occidental. So at least, you don't have to give everything to them, but at least a subsidy, then they can find, maghahanap tayo ng... I'm not sure if my computation is correct. Is it 2.1 billion for six months? At least may basic na pagka... May yeah, but 300 a day, a day ay, hindi makatao. 30, 400 a day 12, for a family. Mga iba sa mga... Eh, ang partner nga eh. No. 12,400 a day times 30 days is 12,000. Eh, ang partner nga ngayon eh. Ang kwita lang 5,000 naman din. Yeah. Diba? Okay. Ganun okay. Lang, so... Diba? 
Kaya tayo nagpupumilit Madam, na pagandahin ang buhay ng farmer kasi ta- gusto natin. Tama po. Ano Madam Chair. Bakit? Pero sila, 5,000 lang ang kanila. Kali po, mapapadali po sana ito kung mapapadali ang pagpasok ng ROV. Kaya po kung nakikiusap during the committee hearing na rin po, na ma-insure yung lahat ng cabinet offices at mga opisina ng gobyernong dadaanan, nakusulat na po ako sa lahat nung dadaan ng opisina, Bureau of Quarantine, Coast Guard, EPA, uh, Bureau of Customs, at saka po immigration. I already written them a letter yesterday. Nasubmit ko na po, may specific na pangalan ng barko. Kung yung limang ahinsa po na yon, ibibigay sa atin ngayon yung assurance na pagdating ng barko dyan, cleared na sila, diretso na po yung barko to Oriental Mindoro, mapapabilis po natin ang pag-solve ng problema. Yun ang po hinihingi na namin. I-assure kami na yung pong permitting ng mga ito, sa halip na pahirapan yung barko, nadaliin. Nakakatulong na po ng malaki yun. Who are you addressing your question to, uh, Governor? Uh, Kasi, sabi ko sa pamamagitan po ng, ng committing ito, mas mapadali si natin. Kaya ang uh, sasagot sa kanila para ma-assure ka na mangyayari yung hinihiling. Yung barko dumating. Sino ba in charge ng barko? Coast Guard. Kasi sinabi mo yun, nakatingin lahat. Oh, eh, Dapat may ano, oo at gagawin, di ba? Oh, sino? Uh, partly ma'am, Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Oh, Guard. Di ayan, Coast Guard daw. Coast Guard. Quarantine. Kayo na po. Safety. Kayo na po ang sasagot. Uh, at least those parts. Kasi we will... We will uh, Uh, we will collaborate with other agencies na concerned, ma'am. Habang wala po pong inaapoint na kami po, na kami na ang kitingin po. Kayo po. Sige oh, po, yes. sir. Oh, okay. Limang opisina po yun. Bureau of Quarantine. Ano magkukul- yes, sir. Ang PPA po nandyan. Yes, sir. Coast Guard, yes, sir. Bureau of Immigration, at Bureau of Customs. Yes, sir. Yun. Pangalawa, yes. Madam Chair, uh, hinihiling ko po sa lahat ng ahensya ng gobyerno yung lahat ng tulong na nabigay na mula noong February 28 hanggang sa araw na to ng hearing. Hindi ako naniniwalang 20 million lang. So lahat ng nabigay na ng DSWD, lahat ng nabigay na ng DA, lahat ng nabigay na ng BIFAR sa ilalim ng DA at kung wala pa, para makita natin. Senator Dahil, Loren, kasi itong Coast Guard, di naman marunong mag... Ito, hindi marunong mag-compute yan. No? Dapat ibigay natin doon sa marunong sa... Compute. O, oh, palagay ko. Hindi. Ginagawa po nila ang kanilang kayang gawin. <laughs> Pero sino ka magaling sa inyo lahat mag-compute? <laughs> Kasi... Um, that's why my my motion, Madam Sina? Chair, is to request all agencies helping the provinces affected by the oil spill to submit to the committee all help in kind, in cost, from February 28 to Today. Today, yeah. Uh, today is Tuesday. Uh, we hope to have March 14. Inputs. March 14. Yes. Diba? The inputs from the agencies uh, by tomorrow at the latest. And uh, I, and then your wish list or anong gagawin nyo sa next 30 days na ibibigay nyo. Kasi for sure, it will not be solved in 30 days. So what have you given so far? If you have not, if not given anything, then what will you give, let's say, before? Ilang libong before boats na fiberglass boats ang nabigay nyo. Pero wala naman pwedeng mag-fishing dahil nasa oil spill. Wala nga. Or, dole, let's say kabuhayan, nandiyan ang dole, alternative na kabuhayan. Nagbigay ba kayong capital para sa sari-sari store? Nagbigay kayo para sa gagawin? Meron na po kayong binigay? Anong klaseng kabuhayan ang binigay nyo? Magkanong capital? DSWD Sustainable Livelihood Program sa mga 4P families na nakatira sa karagatan. Sino ang nabigay? Anong nabigay na nyo? O uh, lahat ng ahensya ng gobyerno magsumite sa committee chair uh, and the members, please lahat na nabigay na natulong at kung wala pa, anong ibibigay na tulong? At ikakalap namin yan, ibibigay namin sa mga apektong LGUs at yun ang hahantayin, iintay nila. 30 days na ibibigay nyo. Pag hindi pa naresolba ng 30 days, another 30 days. Pag hindi pa, another 30 days hanggang sa 5 months ng Gimaras Solution or more, wag naman sana. Pero at least, meron kayong commitment na nakasulat na nasumite sa committee ito para may kinalabasan. Hindi lang investigasyon, kwentuhan, tapos hinaing, tapos. May pinanghahawakan si Mayor ng Pola at si Governor Dolor at sa lahat ng mayor na lum- lumuwas pa dito na ito ang pangako ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno. 
Uh, that, that's a motion, Madam Chair. Mm -mm. Thank you. Agencies of the government to submit what they're going to do. Then. Affected by the oil spill by the part by agency. Thank you. I to us and we will give a copy to each tenant. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I think that's a very uh, concrete uh, output of this hearing while understanding the science of what will go into. Uh, the abatement and containment of the oil spill, but the humanitarian response and the socio-economic needs of our people in the three or more provinces up to the barangay, sitio, purok level will hopefully be addressed. And walang dahilan po ang ahensya na sabihin walang pera at meron pong pera. At sinait ko na sa inyo ang pinanggagalingan po ng pera. Okay. At kung mabagal ang mga ahensya, sabihin nyo. At uh, hindi tayo pwedeng uh, life as usual. Hindi po, emergency po ito, pang araw-araw na pangingisda ng ating mga fisher folks ang apektado rito. Hindi lang sa aming probinsya, kundi lalo na sa Oriental Mindoro. Okay. Finish? Yeah, thank you, Senator Lawrence. Hey, Madam Chair, will you have another hearing? Yeah, uh, we'll hearing. just suspend okay. this and we'll decide. Yeah. Uh, sino? Hindi na, hindi na, umalis na eh. Nag-online. Nag-online. Uh, nasaan? Meeting. Wala. Kanina babalik. Oo. Oh, oh. Isuspend na natin. Ay, Hindi na. Suspend na lang. 2.30 na eh. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. May panghuling salita si Governor Donor okay. na binubulong sa akin. Sabi ko sabihin na lang sa mikropono. We wish to acknowledge uh, Governor Donor. Greetings ma'am. Um, first, we wish to thank the committee on... Uh, initiating this one and Senator Tolentino also for doing a great job. Siya po yung kapartner ko rin po sa Japanese Embassy doon sa mga sulat nating pinadala. Second, I wish to thank all the cabinet secretaries and the directors na tumutulong. Honestly po, napakaganda po ng response kaya lang mutamutaki. Ang kailangan po namin isang maliwanag na baton. Ano, isang maliwanag na baton. Ngayon na may baton na tayo. Ang sabi ng mutamutaki, lahat tumutulong, lahat gumagawa ng kanilang role Kailangan lang po natin may nagbabaton. On containment and um, cleanup, meron na ngayon sa Coast Guard. Ang kailangan po natin on other uh, initiatives, meron po. Para kami naman po sana sa local government, ang concern na lang namin, paano namin naalagaan yung mamamayan namin sa local. And we think this, this kind of concrete actions, uh, hearing from you and hearing from them, also dun sa owners po, babalik lang po ako dun sa owner po ng, uh, ng barko. Sana po, tulad ng ating pinangako sa hearing na ito at pinangako nyo kahapon, kayo po ay makikipagtulungan. At sa lalo madaling panahon ay kukumbinsin niyo yung counterpart ninyo sa PNI, sa Harbor Star at saka sa Malayan Towage na magawa yung part naman ninyo. On the part of the local government and the people of Oriental Mindoro, rest assured po, that when all of us are doing our respective uh, responsibilities, we have a people very much appreciative of everything that you have done so far, you are doing, and you will still do. At the end of the day, let's make Oriental Mindoro, Antique and Palawan a better place for all of us while learning the lessons brought about by the oil spill. Maraming salamat po. Magandang hapon and thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Governor Delor. I wish to thank our senators who attended this public inquiry, our resource person and guests who have shared valuable information and views. We are very much committed to help in the ongoing efforts to contain the oil spill, as this will avert further damages to our fragile ecosystem and the people in the area who have been suffering since the oil spill began. In the meantime, we are suspending this meeting. Thank you for attending. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Madam Chairperson? Yes? Would I be allowed to talk? Uh, no, Nick. No, I will send your question to the concerned person and I will give you their answer. I have your question, eh. But oh. that, that, that's another thing, uh, Madam this, Chairperson. This is Very short. Okay. Very short. Okay. But uh, possible. Uh, you, you just comment because the meeting has been suspended. So you can comment. Okay.